we're gonna figure this out as we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our stream. <laughs> here's here's Jack. I am Jack. Uh, this is Karen. Hello, my lady love, and Re I am I am rich. Recently acquired, re recently minted uh, Wisconsinite here. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Wisconsin. Get your ass to Mars. I mean Wisconsin. <laughs> Seriously. May as well be Mars. It may as well be Mars. <laughs> Really? Because I've been telling everybody for, for for weeks. I'll see you sometime. I'm going to Wisconsin, not Mars. <laughs> like, literally, that's what I've been saying. It's cold. It's desolate. Lots of things that look like cheese. Yeah. yeah. Ground isn't red, though. I mean, that's more like Kentucky. Yeah. Look at that nice red clay. Put some red sunglasses on. There's no difference. Okay. Is there? Is there no difference? None. Okay, well, there you go. There you go. Uh, so we're gonna play. We're gonna play a game on my iPad called Severed. I just want everyone to know that uh, this this is a game made by Drinkbox Studio, and the only reason I was remotely interested in this game is they're the people that made Guacamelee, which I loved. I loved Guacamelee, and they made this game. It was exclusive to the PlayStation Vita. So me and the ten other people who owned the PlayStation Vita. Let me, see the, let me see the mouse real quick. Yeah. Because the screen's a little border, I'm just going to make it bigger. Oh, sure. I already love guacamole just for the name. I have no idea what it's about. I assume it's got some kind of Mexican theme or it's, something. It's, imagine Metroid, but instead of being a space hunter, you are a luchador wrestler. That's amazing. You'd like, you would like guacamole. <laughs> guacamole is <laughs> beautiful. fantastic. It's just beautiful. Nicely done, Rich. Thank you. You're on top of that. Uh, and so this this game is a it's a touch control game that they made specifically for the Vita, and now they're rolling out to other non. <laughs> Did the Vita have touch control? Vita has touch controls. Yeah. Okay. And the Vita is basically like a PlayStation, but with touch controls and with no disc drive. Right, right. It's like the PlayStation handheld, and you can get cards for it, but it, it also has like a memory uh, slot. You can okay. get physical games for it, but yeah, and no one bought it. No one, no one bought it except for me, and I love it. I fucking love the Vita, but it gets no love anymore. I think it's just that the, the handheld chip has sailed. People are doing this stuff on their phones, on their phones. and tablets. It's all phones now. It's all phones now. Uh, we will be talking Stranger Things. We're, let's, we'll give people who haven't seen it yet a little bit of time just to, uh, just to hear us chat before we get Thank into you. super Stranger Things talk, because we will. We will. I'm just going to start. I'll start a new game, too. New game. New game. Also, um, oh, we forgot to delay everything. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You know what? It doesn't matter. All right, so what do you do in this game? Tap left or right. Okay, so it's all touch controls, and so right now I'm, I'm like, looking around. Okay. Oh, I can go down here, and so then I, uh, I walk straight, and then that's that's it. Like, oh, I'm is this, like, missed? It's, well, no, no, you'll see. I, I played it a little bit. Uh, here's the mini map. I played it a little bit, and once we get into combat, that's where it turns a little more interesting. The graphics remind me of Monument Valley, just flat color. Oh, <laughs> they remind yes. me of Guacamelee. As it should remind you of Guacamelee. Wait till you see who we are. I think there's a. Is there a mirror over here somewhere? Wait till you see who we. Oh, there we are. Look, look at us. Oh my Gorn! Our arm has been severed. You're like. Uh... Elf or Pokenome or Poco Pokenomus? <laughs> yeah. Oh. And there's a creature behind us. Whoa, spooktacular. This is so spooky. Oh. Yeah, put that put that drape back over that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> His little tendrils. Right. So now... You know what? I was th I was thinking that, like, the sword would replace our fallen off hand. But no, we just hold the sword in our other hand. You know? We still have a, a severed hand. You don't have, like, a chainsaw tape to it or anything? Mm -hmm. So we slash. I just want some geek uh, points for that. Did I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone now loves you after you said that. <laughs> I figured it would be like, oh, Karen, come on. That's, that's too obvious. That's not going to last long, though. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'm going to end it all. I'm going to end it all. Oh, no. What did you think of the new Ghostbusters? 
I liked it. Mm, I really no. found it entertaining. It was cute. Mm. It's charming. <laughs> and it's all merits. I, I, oh. I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> Rich. Why why would you bring that up, Rich? Yes. Yeah. Because they're going to, you know why? Yeah. Because they're going to ask sooner or later, and I'm just going to get out of the way. That's true. You know what? I thought I, I saw I saw the science, Scientist Man video. Oh, yeah? I, I, I walked in on you guys shooting the Scientist Man video, when was it? Sunday? Yeah, yeah. And my first reaction was, oh, God, no. They're, they're, they're digging up that Ghostbusters well. Like, how awful. But I think it turned out really well. Okay, good. And I think good. he, I, I, I was really worried, but I think Mike brought up some really good points. I've been so busy. I haven't watched the finished product yet, so. Oh, okay. You know, the, the basic, the, the moral of the story is, if you look at the numbers of bad reviews and thumbs down on the YouTube video, it's actually an incredibly small percentage. Yeah, yeah. And that's the basic, it was like, oh, that's a very well done video. I was really worried that it was just like no. poking at the Ghostbusters bear. But <laughs> you mean like, like politics or religion or the Great Pumpkin? Ex uh, politics, religion, or Ghostbusters remake? That's those are the three <laughs> ones that you can't talk about. <laughs> but uh, it was like Egon had risen from the dead, right? Oh, uh, also, Rich, we had a couple tips before we yeah, started. Is that I'm Jesus get to in that picture? Is that like Jesus and the little... Oh, no, I thought maybe it was that's like our family. something for the little children, but that's... That's our family. Okay. Okay, now we... Oh, there's another thing to attack. I guess I should do that. Okay. Turtle the Wise says, Jack slash Rich. No, so not not and, but slash. So either, either or, I guess? Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. sure, either or. OJ slash, slash, what's his face, oh, slash, 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 like that kind of stuff. Oh, slash. God. <laughs> you wanted your gig points back. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you could remake any poorly done movie that had potential, what would it be? You have unlimited funds. Who is director and cast, living or dead, that you would select? It has to be poorly made, huh? Yeah. Because, I mean, I'd love to see somebody we've, do a remake of Arsenic and Old Lace, but the original wasn't poorly made. We've, we've made the argument about remakes that the best movies to remake aren't the movies that were super good the first time around, but the movies that weren't quite there. They had potential. They had con conceptually, yeah. conceptually, they're good, or they just fuck something up, some aspect of it up. And that's, that's the kind of movie you want to remake. Okay, putting this we out there. We can do Bernie's too. Let's see somebody we get that, that suck. <laughs> specifically, <laughs> specifically two. You're leaving one alone, huh? Yeah, because, <laughs> because one is not terrible, but two, you spend the whole time watching this zombie corpse shambling along underwater with these headphones. And it's like, <laughs> oh my God. God. No, that's what breathed life into the Weekend at Bernie's uh, filmatic universe. Yeah, I, I mean, if I, if I want to see people shambling around like zombies I could go to a nursing home or <laughs> you know slow shuffling no that little that like that Bernie's walk that was that's what it was all about yeah it's a little jam it's it was, not a he zombie had a little, walk he had a, a little jam yeah okay here's what I'm going to throw out for a movie to remake yeah Dick Tracy yeah Dick Tracy is fine the movie the movie is fine I think it can be done better sure I wouldn't object to it being remade. Uh, well, and, you know, I'm, I'm also I'm also like taking into account if we're gonna get a movie remade, we gotta pitch this, and so it's gotta be a franchise people know, right? Yeah. But that wasn't done perfectly, and Dick Tracy, I think, is right up there. There have been things we've I can't think of anything by name. There have been things we've watched. I think I've probably said as much like during Best of the Worst. Like mm. they could do such and such really good, but. <laughs> they didn't quite work here. Right? right, right. And now I'm drawing a blank in each and every film I've said that about. Like Robot Jacks? Some, yeah, like something like Robot Jacks, yes. <laughs> yeah, Robot Jacks could, could uh, use his budget. Do you, you have any kind of answer to this? I know you don't think about movies that I'm often. I'm trying to think. The thing is, like, movies that I didn't especially care for kind of just fall out of my memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. Chat's bringing up Universal Soldier. I don't think that's a terrible pick. Oh, it's been so long since I've seen that, yeah. Sasha, the movies I remember are the movies I've loved. <laughs> you improve Robot Jacks just by having more ass-kicking robot fights. Right. 
<laughs> That's exactly how you <laughs> Literally, all you need is a robot fight in the middle of that movie. Yeah, it needs one more good <laughs> fight sequence. And you're fine. And you're fine. Dick Tracy doesn't need a kid. Oh, uh, move that to the front. Does Dick Tracy have a kid? Yeah, was there, there was a there's kid, a kid the, sidekick in the movie. There was a kid sidekick in the Dick Tracy movie. Okay. I, I saw it at the discount theater when I was... No, out, was you like know 12, what, maybe? Ultimazer, I, I remember saying this a year and a half ago on the stream when people were joking about a Rocketeer reboot. I am pro I Rocketeer reboot. I love Rocketeer. Rocketeer is yeah. a great movie. I am pro Rocketeer reboot. Oh, for sure. I, I, or sequel or whatever. Uh, well, it's going to be He's a sequel. He's a great character. Yeah. I love the, the classic Rocketeer well enough. I mean, I, I love that movie. But yeah. yeah, and it's not it's not remake proof. It's not remake proof. It could use a, it could use a, a visual update. It could use a, a, a CG actiony update, and it could be fun. So no. I'm I'm team pro Rocketeer update. I haven't seen her, so it may already be. It sounds like it might already be this, but a remake of Electric Dreams. You ever seen that movie? Where no. The guy's in love with his. His computer falls in love with him. No, it doesn't fall in love with him. His desktop. His desktop computer, he spills yeah. like like wine something into it or something, yeah. and the computer becomes sentient. Yeah. <laughs> and they both fall in love with the same girl. Oh, that was it. <laughs> what? It's it's cute. <laughs> and and I, I her was something with like a computer. So, he, yeah, that he falls in love with. Yeah, yeah. it's, 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 it's more like a Siri. His computer is Siri, and, and he's a lonely man. And, yeah. Yeah. How about like a reboot or a remake of V? Which they is did pretty that. good, but flawed. <laughs> they did that. They tried that heard. already. I've heard her. I've, I haven't heard much about it, so I'm assuming no. I've never seen it. Okay. I think I need to stop looking around so much. I have to find my family in the woods. That's my job. The V could probably be done better. As much as I, as well, much as I actually thinking. love the original V. You could probably improve on V. Sure. Donovan, that character, I mean, he's a little bit schlocky compared to everything else in V. Well, they gave the kids an action hero guy to root for. Oh. Okay. It's always running from the aliens or shooting at it. Alienation? Yeah, that was. I don't know that it needs to be rebooted, though. I don't yeah. know that it needs to be remade. Yeah, there's some I have to watch the just, TV show. There's some things that were just of their time. You know, like, I don't think, like, like I really like Failsafe. But I don't know they would have the same emotional impact when it's not during the Cold War. Like, I mean, that was a time when, when people were very worried about what about a remake getting that's a still, bomb dropped. What about a remake that's still set during the Cold War? Maybe. Yeah, but there's, like, there's something about... But it was well done. It's, there's something about, like, the modern-day feeling that helps something yeah you know go over that edge from like mediocre to exceptional and so if it was feeding off of cold war fe fears during the cold war chat that's one Remo williams would be a fine remake you've mentioned that i've never even heard of this how about a remake of an, a re another remake of flight of the phoenix that doesn't suck this time <laughs> I really love the original. The remake is just. Uh, you know what? what? That doesn't need to be remade because the original's great. The original is great. Jimmy Stewart, Ernest Borgnine. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed the name. What? Flight oh. of the Phoenix. Flight of the Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, they did a remake with. Um, spoiler alert! The premise is that these people crash in the desert, and one of the guys is saying we can reconfigure the parts of the broken plane into something that'll fly and get us out of the desert and save our lives. And the twist is, they find out that the guy who wants to do it is. He's an air, airplane engineer of model airplanes, and so they lose, <laughs> they kind of lose their faith in it. He's also like this kind of well, stereotypical other, German, you know, like Nazi kind of what cold. What, what makes Flight of the Phoenix great, though? Now that you've spoiled the twist. No, well, I twice the spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't the, cover. The um, the guy who can save them with this insane. Cl plan to, mm -hmm. you know, redesign the parts of their crash plane into a new plane, he's a complete dick. He's a complete he's heartless cold. dick. And they kind of have to do what he says, mm -hmm. because he's the only one who can save them. At I some point, he actually goes on strike, because yeah. they're not working hard enough. He says, he says at, one, at one point, they're like, the guy's like, well, you know, your plane will hold such and such people, but we've got such and so, such yeah, people. This plane can hold seven people, but we've got eight people. 
Yeah, and he's like, you know, he's like, well, you said the other guy was probably not going to make it, or that guy will be dead. I mean, he's like, oh, well, that doesn't matter. He doesn't care. He just doesn't care, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, This sounds great. It's a wonderful movie. Light of the Phoenix, it's got... What's his name? Cary Grant or whatever it is? Uh, uh... Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. I think Ernest Borgnine is the other guy. Har- Hardy Kruger is the German yeah. guy. I would like to see a la- The Last Starfighter remade too, for, for nostalgic reasons. Yeah. I don't know if it's that great of a concept. It's such a cheesy, like the movie overall and the concept, you know, like yeah. we, 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 we dispersed these arcade games throughout the galaxy to try to find the people who could pilot our starships it's so cheesy. I don't think you could do it with aliens. What if you did a last Starfighter reboot, but with like modern in a modern day war setting why? with drone pilots? Why didn't they do that? Why like couldn't you do it with aliens? Or one of those huh? movies? Why couldn't you do it with aliens? It's, it's just so called. cheesy. That's the point. You do it cheesy. You you embrace that cheese. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it remake. It's a, a kids Flight adventure the movie. That sucks in the first place. Oh, I liked Flight of the Navigator. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's cheesy. But. Do you remember when the airplane was talking like Pee Wee Herman? That was crazy. Fred Savage. God, was that Fred Savage? No, that wasn't Fred somebody Savage. Else. That Flight was some Navigator? other. That was other kid. Flight of the Navigator. Yeah, it wasn't Fred Savage. It was somebody else. If he was in it. He's not the main kid. Chat. Chat. Help me out here. I got my phone here. <laughs> I do think a Flash Gordon remake would work. Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Cult. I don't know. It works as this just cheesy queen uh, uh, concert film. It's great. Henry Thomas. For, was that Henry Thomas from E.T.? Oh, wait. Karen's looking it up. Yeah. I actually don't think a... He looked like Flash Henry Gordon Thomas. Rebate, I was thinking re- about rebate. that, too, but I don't think it was. I want to... I mean, in, in, in my Good. heart, it tells me it was Fred Savage. Well, let's find we're finding out. We're going to find... This is uh, super important. I'm saying Joey Kramer? I didn't ever get Joey Kramer, who was arrested for robbery a few months ago. Well, great! <laughs> <laughs> See? It all works out in the end. Glenn or Glenda remake? I... I- I don't think, see, I don't think you could make The Caitlyn Jenner story! I don't think you could make movies as bad as uh, Ed Wood's movies, and I think that's the whole reason people watch them. You, you could make movies as bad as Ed Wood. It's like the room. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it. Damn it, Trash, I'm gonna skip over your tip until Karen is back. Uh. Yep. Oh, Turtle the Wise actually goes on. It says, uh, oh. the two movies off the top of my head that had great potential but were botched The Golden Compass and Spawn. The former's book series already had such potential, and Spawn is awesome. Eh, I, mean, I, don't know about I Spawn. mean, like, Spawn is a really neat visual and concept, and then it kind of starts breaking apart. <laughs> You know, like a, a a hell warrior, yeah, who goes rogue against Satan and the army of hell. Like, okay, you know what? I guess, I guess, I just, I have no respect for the comic. No, 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 no. no. And it, it, you know why? You know why? I, I hate Spawn. I think pretty much because it's a neat concept, and Todd McFarlane doesn't do anything interesting with it because he kind of sucks. Yeah, as a creator. But I guess that's what I'm saying. Is but I, I guess could, that's why it would work as somebody's remake. Somebody with an actual vision and a direction and an idea of what they were doing could make Spawn work. <laughs> like, a, like a director, you mean? <laughs> so you mean so <laughs> you're asking for a director. I think that's a, that's a tough thing to ask for, Rich. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe it's a thing. Oh, Compass. At first, I thought he said Golden Child with Eddie Murphy. I, you know when I was reading it? Yeah. I thought the same thing. <laughs> same old rocket. I thought the same thing. I thought he was going to say Golden, the Golden Golden Child. Compass was the... That was James Bond and a kid, and they fight on polar bears, right? Daniel Craig. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either. Seen it. it was Daniel Craig and kids, and they fought... 
on Polar Bear because that's all I know about it. The Golden Child one was the Eddie Murphy one with like the kid who was like some kind of spiritual Dalai Lama. Yeah, he was like the next incarnation yeah. of a holy leader or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Came out around the same time as Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Well, there you go. Which is uh, another movie about Oriental mysticism that's that's far more entertaining in every conceivable way. <laughs> hey, wait, that's my hand. Hey, game, that's my hand. Cabbage Patch says. Humberto Cabbage Patch Humberto. says. Humberto. Hey, Karen, welcome to Wisconsin. Thank you. I remember that you were a big fan of Radiohead. What, yes. do, you th what do you think of their newest album? A moon-shaped pool. I think it's one of the best. Honestly, I didn't know they had a new album out. <laughs> I. Are you excited now? I am. I wasn't super <laughs> crazy about In Rainbows. Um, I, I really liked their their first album was alright. Their second album was better. Their, I really liked OK Computer and Kid A. And then, I'm like a bad fan. The one after that was good too. But, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's like they started out being a rock band, and then they turned into, like, a lot of electronic noise. Like, kind of more than is what I prefer. So, if they've turned back toward, a, like, a heavy medium and a blend of the two, hey, if you like In Rainbows, that's wonderful. But I, I preferred some of their stuff a little earlier than that. I love OK Computer. It's, it's like a great concept album. Like a dystopian future and anxiety about the millennium and whatever. Uh, R. Miller, you shut your mouth, goddammit. You shut your fat mouth. Big Trouble in Little China is fucking perfect. It's one of my favorite films. Yeah, but The Rock is gonna do it. <laughs> the Rock is gonna make it better. <sighs> the Rock is still a thing. He's huge. The Rock yeah, is huge. Well, I know he's huge. He's always been gigantic, but oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Where's my rim? Where's the rim shot? Where's our rim shot? We haven't needed it in so long. Get it. Oh. Get the rim shot. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Hold on. <laughs> is this it? No, this is it. This is it. This, this is it. it. We got okay, it. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna simul burp. Uh, no, that was that was fine, Karen. That was fine. Uh, the Rock still does very well at the box office. Okay. Is like a I just didn't know if he was like getting to be like old man Rock. Like, have you seen um, Arnold's pictures of Arnold well, like swimming and like like my oh, mom like yeah. he's nowhere near as old as Arnold. My mom subscribed to the Inquirer and he's like yeah yeah. yeah I mean, but also Arnold is 112. Like, yeah. No, The Rock still does very well at the box office. He is still a box office draw. That was actually. One of the very few live action movies that actually made money this summer was uh, The Rock and Kevin Hart's movie. What was it called? Um, was it an action movie? Or yeah, it was like movie? a it was like a buddy cop movie with The Rock and Kevin Hart. And no idea. Arnold is seventy. That's true. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Arnold. I'm sorry what I said. I mean, I guess you look. He's good seventy movie. goddamn years looks, old. Looks better than my dad does. Seventy. But, but so, in any case, he, he's still doing well in the box office, The Rock is, and, and he, he has been in talks of remaking Little Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. yeah. Central and Intelligence. He's, he's going to do you. just as good a job as Kurt Russell did in this fantasy world, which I have invented for myself. My, my favorite movie with The Rock is the one where he's the tooth fairy. I think that was originally going to be on it. doesn't matter. <laughs> any, any big macho muscle guy will work. Yeah. You could have had, you know, um, Hulk Hogan as the Tooth Fairy. Same effect. Lando was taken, says. As far as remakes go, Miracle Mile would be a great one. The original is wonderful, but I'd love to see a modern take on the story. Well, that's another one where, you're, you know, you're taking it out of the Cold War, and it wouldn't have as much impact. Because mm -hmm. if you didn't live through the Cold War... Any night could have been the last night. Well, and so and so then you know the question is: Do you do you set it during the Cold War and hope to recapture some of that, yeah. or do you give it that like modern terrorism is everywhere yeah, twist? And right, and it's like that's right now that's a a super fine line to tread between being like deep and being patronizing. You know, yeah. there's no 
one terrorist attack that could compare to the potential of nuclear annihilation that yeah, was but going a, a dirty, on a that dirty was very bomb, palpable during the Cold War. Yeah, but a dirty bomb in a city center would have many of the same ill effects without nearly the boom. Oh, sure, but I, I, I think Rich is right in saying, like, you know, like the duck and cover yeah. of World War II yeah. and the Cold War constant scare. Bay of Pigs. And we, we just don't feel that. Even though, like, terrorism is happening yeah. Yeah. every day, like, we don't really feel it. Yeah. Maybe that's Not just us being way. cold-hearted robots. But <laughs> our generation of cold-hearted robots. No, at any, well, at any given moment, we were hours away from complete annihilation. Mm -hmm. and, and also, it's been, you know, what, uh, 55, what, 70 years since, about 70 years since 71 or something, since the bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That was fresh and new. It may still be there, but we've gotten used to it. We've lived our entire lives under that shadow. I mean, some of the anxiety just has to go out of it right. after a while. Mm. Right. Mm. I'm with you. Rich and Jack are old men. No shit. Are you, are you just joining us? Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Welcome to your first stream. You just stream. noticed? <laughs> uh, apparently this is your first stream. Yes. Rich and Jack are old, old men. That's not true. I'm, I'm not, not a man. that old. <laughs> Future famous person says, Cronenberg said he wants to make the fly again, but differently. Cronenberg? Yeah. If I recall correctly, his idea is so weird that he can't get it funded. <laughs> his, his re I would believe that. His remake was great, but I wouldn't mind seeing him do it again. Oh, this is interesting. He's This person is saying, I don't mean to interrupt you, but a miracle mile could work with an imminent asteroid collision. an interesting premise. Hmm. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Hmm. But Cronenberg and Flight. Don't want to disregard that tip. Oh, sir. Cronenberg uh, has uh, has uh, earned enough goodwill that he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. He wants he wants to re remake the Fly. You go for it, man. I trust him to do it. They've already made it twice. Re-remake? Yeah. Okay. The re-remake. Well, Cronenberg's the one who did the remake. Okay. Yeah. I he's, he, the remake. He's, the, he's the Jeff Goldblum director. Okay, I can't... Oh, did I just choose the right path right away? That's annoying. Yes, Metal Gear is a fat load of bullshit. Metal Gear? Yeah. Chad's uh, bringing up Metal Gear. Oh, yeah, Metal Gear sucks. It's a lot of fucking nonsense. That doesn't know whether or not it wants to treat the material as a joke or seriously. It needs to pick a side. Is that a movie based on the video game? It needs to not be full of itself. No, it's just a video game. Because it's not good enough to be a movie, quite frankly. <laughs> well, it originally came out on the NES. If you were on the NES, you didn't really have to have a plot. That's wild. It, 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 Metal Gear didn't get popular until it was out on the PlayStation. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid is yeah. what is what oh. skyrocketed. Skyrocketed on Metal Gear. Boom. Okay, apparently I backtracked for nothing. So I'm sorry. Ooh, rainbows. There were there were there were branching paths. Pretty. And I, I got pretty far down one path and I said to myself, there were these other paths that I really want to explore. So before I get too too far, I should really check down those other paths and they were dead ends. So this, this this game is from the Guacamele devs. If you could not tell by the color palette. It's not alone. just it's well, it's not just like the artist, right? I mean, Oh no, it's it's Drinkbox Studio. So it's, I love a, it's the, the color same color. studio. The color it looks great and actually I don't know if you guys next time I get into a fight I'll show you. It actually has a really good fighting system where you have to like block incoming attacks and fight and people block and you have to choose the right way to swipe. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually digging the fighting mechanics of this. I like the way they've 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 gone with like flat stuff and not having any texture, which is like, you know, less processor intensive and whatever mm -hmm. else. But instead of making it all one color, it's a gradation. Like yeah. the trees are like dark purple and shading into pink. Isn't it beautiful? It is. Nice, nice bit of color. Gobbledygook says... Gobbledygooks! Just wanted to pat myself on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Hearts of Iron 4 has been out for less than two months. And I have collected all 30 Steam achievements. It was not easy. Thinking of trying Stellaris now. 
Solaris? What? what? Stellaris. Oh. What's Hearts of Iron? Is the game he got uh, all 30 achievements on. Congratulations. I want to see a Solaris game. That's a <laughs> book by... by um, how do you do that as it's a game? It's also two movies, right? Like, there's a yeah. George Clooney version and there's a 70s version. That would make a wacky game. By the oh, way, if you ever just want to have the best time, uh, the 70s Solaris soundtrack is this super weird synth ambience. You put that on when you, like, play a board game or anything, and it will totally blow your mind. Oh, wow. It's the great. It's one of the greatest minimalist soundtracks. Almost makes me wish ever. I did. Almost makes me wish I did drugs. Uh, uh, yes. By the <laughs> way, oh, if you if you are a drug uh, user, uh, listen to that. So I've, I haven't seen either of the Solaris's, so I need to. It sounds like a great concept. Mm-hmm. What's the what's the now what's the the plot? It's like a they're 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 orbiting a. It's a sentient planet. planet. Well, it's not only that, but the, the entire planet is sentient. And it does things, and it doesn't really communicate with them, and it, it just does its own thing in weird and ineffable ways. And and it starts bringing people's lost loves or, or simulated versions of them back to life. And these versions of them think that they're alive. Yeah. Or at least think that they're the same people, but... They really are, and they can't the planet, and it's, and, and it's just making these people crazy. So it's man, it's a man like interacting with his wife who had committed suicide years yeah. earlier, right? Yeah, his wife, yeah. his fiance, whatever she was. And it's yeah, it's, it's really kind of weird. And I'm not sure what you would do if you know you'd have people's you know, weird versions of people trying to tug at your heart, heartstrings and just. Planet. I don't know how you turn that into a video game. It's a strange video. <laughs> a pretty video. Solaris, the planet is always making all kinds of shapes. Sorry, it's in the Elgato. What if you just turn it down in the desktop? On your desktop audio? Tablet? No, you see it down there, Elgato? No, oh. no, 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 in the, in the mixer. Mm. In the mixer. Where all the audio is. No, no, not that mixer. The mixer what? The, audio. the green ones that are going up and down? Oh, it has a separate one. Isn't that neat? Nifty. Sorry, everybody. Hopefully it sounds cool. Uh, we can't actually hear it. Lisa's audio is very quiet. You mean me? Karen? Car probably Karen. Get that. Yeah, you got to get that mic right up in there. I mean, if I pull this back, I think I can get it more up in my... Yo, up in my grill or whatever. Your I craw? I'm, what if I just... Nah, if I slouch, Stuff I'm it in your craw? I could weigh 100 pounds. More. Lift okay. it up more, and then... How do I... Oh, it's just stiff. No? Yeah, no, it's just stiff. Okay. You what? can probably loosen it a bit if you want, and tighten it again. Righty, tighty, lefty, loosey? Yeah. Same as everything. Okay. Okay. I don't want to, like, screw it up. That's Who is this Karen person? That's a great it's question. The maid. <laughs> I'm Rich's fiancé. I've recently moved to Wisconsin. Welcome to Wisconsin. Thank you. Thing goes up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yay! Bonga Doug. Bonga Doug. Bonga Doug. Straw Paul, let's name me. <laughs> <laughs> don't agree to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. I know these people don't agree to that. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Gobbledygook says. Oh, go ahead. Nothing. Okay. I'm just going to say anything. Thought you were going to say something. Gobbledygook says. Another tip to randomly hear Rich say, 97X, bam! The future of, of rock, rock and, and roll. roll. Gotta go to Kmart, 400 Oak Street. Be sure Gotta to get underwear, boxers, not briefs. Judge Wapner, 430. All right, Ray girl. <laughs> Be Judge Judy now. Wapner's long gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Be sure to try DC Universe Online for the PS4. It's free, you fucks. Uh, apparently, Actually. it is free. Still, we still haven't tried it, and I'm very, very sorry. 
I, I have not had time to watch The Killing Joke yet. I've been, I've been, I've been moving. I haven't even seen Mike since I've been in Wisconsin. I've, I've been officially living in Wisconsin for less than 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we got back last night. Yeah. And today Mike hasn't been around, so. Mustard Lover says, Hey, Rich. Why weren't you in the Star Trek Beyond review? Also, what did you think of the movie? I hated the action scenes. I uh, wasn't in the review, partly because I was on the very last episode uh, with, the, with the Ghostbusters. Uh, secondly, I haven't seen it yet. I'm waiting to see it with Karen. We're probably going to see it in the next few days, most likely. So I can't, I can't give you my opinion on it yet. Mike tells me it's good. It's all unknown. I haven't even watched our review of it. I don't oh, want to... Oh, yeah, you can't watch yeah. the review before. That's... That's weird. That's the weird thing about our reviews. You want to watch them after you've seen the movie. You do. Yeah. You really do. Well, because they're not really reviews. They're more conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, which is why, like, the numbers are never hindered by, like, them coming out a few days after the movie comes out. Because <laughs> then usually people see the movie and then they can watch it, you know. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Anonymous says, hey, Karen. Glad you made it safe to Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Is there some tourist spot you look forward to visiting? Also, don't put up with any of Rich's crap. <laughs> also, none of it. What are your thoughts about anime slash Sonic? Um, well, the first question, I hear there's like some kind of like geodesic botanical garden light up dome thing. Yeah. And the I domes. What? I really want to see that because it just looks awesome and I like plants and I like taking my cell phone and making pictures of plants and making little collages and screwing around with filters and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, fuck yeah, the domes are great. Also, I've been to the... ...wacky building by some very interesting architect and it's got these 200, this 200-foot 200 wingspan of these these metal wings with different slats and things. I mean, just just look up the Milwaukee Art Museum and, and Calatrava. Is that his last name? Stream down. Oh, yeah, yeah. And oh, and I guess on. when the music... Oh, wait, wait. Why stream down? I don't know why the stream was down. We didn't touch anything, but other people are, some people are saying we're back. It's back? Can you hear me now? Can you hear us now? That's weird. You lost us you for lost 15 us for seconds? 15 seconds. That's gotta be... That's gotta be Twitch. You missed my story. Okay, well... Uh, I Karen killed the stream. Okay. Uh, we're back. Okay, good. Okay, uh, great. So where were we? Oh, yeah. So there's the Milwaukee Art Museum has these these metal wings things. It, it's it's a it's a sail. It, it's supposed to look like yeah, a sail. Yeah, it's the Brie de Soleil or whatever it it's, is. So it, 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 it looks like a like a ship mast and a giant sail made out of pipes. Wasn't it featured in one of the Transformers movies? Yes, it's the house of the architect in Transformers Three. Yeah, that's okay. our that's the that's the I've entrance that. way to our art museum. If and you I, saw that, and I guess when it's open, the the wing or or the weather in the weather's nice, the wings are up, and in bad weather, and when the museum's closed, right. they put them down. And I've seen the time lapse. I think it takes a few minutes for them to go up or down, but I've never seen them moving, and I want to see them do their thing. I've seen them up, I've seen them down. I want to see them. Yeah, and there's this, if you go like if the weather's nice, it's a certain time of day that like the wings open. It's yeah. nice. And yeah. and the inside is like kind of futuristic, like the hull of a spaceship or something. It's it's a nice museum. It's a, it's a it's a fine museum. Yeah, and it's not so sprawling as the one in Chicago, also cheaper. But uh, <laughs> so you can you know you can look at a good chunk of it in a day. I mean, you could spend you know probably years fine looking at everything in detail, but just just walking it isn't isn't ridiculous. Where you're like, okay, I'm getting tired, and I've only seen half of it. So I really like it. And what about anime slash Sonic? What? Um, are the those, second question. Are those one thing? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog is uh, fun or something. I mean, it's you know, it's good classic arcade and anime. Um, that's a really broad question. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I mean, we, we go from from uh, Trigun, which I like. You know, there's Ranma, which is fun. Uh, anime is just it's so broad. Yeah. Inuyasha's phone. What about tentacle porn? 
<laughs> do you like that? Everybody I, likes that. Come on. Tentacle, That's like saying, do you like peanut yeah, butter sandwiches? Yeah. Tentacle court board is very amusing as a concept. It doesn't really <laughs> get my motor running. but it, I have never heard funny. anyone even call that amusing as a concept. <laughs> well, some of it gets gross. But I mean, like, like, okay, so you know who Otto and Victoria are? Brian Kessinger has... That's like tentacle porn light. Brian Kessinger is a... He's a Disney illustrator. And he does like... Oh, um, wait, wait. We're getting... We're, <laughs> we're about to get schooled in tentacle porn. No, go... No, please, I mean, please it's please not really that. tentacle porn. I'm just joking. Please continue. Okay. No, I'm just joking about being tentacle porn light. <laughs> It's it's a uh, he's a he's an octopus and 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 he's the pet of a girl named Victoria and they just have cute little Victorian adventures. Oh, okay. and she has green hair and he's her pet and like they go walking dogs and he's whatever he's doing each of his tentacles is doing something else. Yeah, I. I How does this relate to tentacle porn? This is so weird. Because he's an octopus and they're kind of he's he's kind of jealous like like there's some kind of mild <laughs> romance going on between. <laughs> Uh, hey, all right, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't. I. I mean, we're all here. We're all here in this. So anyway. Okay. Enough about that. <laughs> no, that was great. That was a great response. <laughs> we covered everything. I guess. Hyperactive slob says, "Hey guys. Hi." Since reviews indicate Suicide Squad is an other DC shit show, yep. here is five bucks to make the movie people actually want. Zack Snyder's Space Cop versus Harry Plinkett. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. No, early reviews are dire. Of course, uh, according to many people, the, the reshoots and the studio tinkering is utterly obvious. And I thought that might at least be kind of fun, and if not standard, like standard action movie, but kind of fun. I sure. Mean, I thought that might be. I didn't really care. You know, I wasn't excited about it. I didn't think it would be bad, though. That's that's they're they're saying it's a tonal mess. Uh, they're saying Leto's Joker is a disaster. Well, I mean, we kind of knew that. Was a, he's following a very very tough act. He is. He is. No, and you know what? I I do applaud the filmmakers and. And Leto himself for trying something so drastically different. Yeah, I I am still going to see it because I'm very very curious. Uh, did you see the um, the Change.org petition? No. What do they want changed? The uh, Change.org, uh, the site where you can you know start your own petition to to get a, a social following. Uh, there's a there's a petition to uh, shut down Rotten Tomatoes for its poor treatment of Suicide Squad and the DC movie universe in general. I thought they were interested in like you know, congressional bills or saving yeah. the whales. Yep, yep. That's usual. That's usual. Well, but anyone can start a petition on, on change that. <laughs> anyone can. And so uh, these people decided that uh, up there with like you know getting corrupt uh, judges out of office uh, is is getting Rotten Tomatoes shut down because they didn't like a movie that they liked. No, that they didn't like a movie <sighs> that they hadn't seen yet. Nobody's seen Suicide Squad. So it's not yet. even out yet. It's out this weekend. I want to say that's that's a petition people ignore. Yeah. Yeah. No matter how many signatures it gets, you just everyone I think ignores that with a brain. Yeah. It's just it's just it's just these are these are the this is the type of fan base. These that, are people with too much time on their hands. <laughs> you know you know what a lot of people have too much time on their hands. These are idiots. And it's not like it's <laughs> get a puppy. I don't know. It's not like it's <laughs> volunteer somewhere. Get a puppy. <laughs> it's not like it's Rotten Tomatoes fault. No, they're an aggregating site. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> no, they're no, not Jack, actually creating the content. It's because Rotten Tomatoes is mean about all DC movies. That's right. Every single DC movie. like Or mostly, it's like they're mean about Man of Steel, they're mean about Dawn of Justice, and now they're being mean about Suicide Squad. But don't they mostly aggregate more or less the same types of reviewers? For every movie, you know, the Sun Times and they, the New they York have this their staple and that, critics. that and the yeah. other. Yeah. It's, it's weird, don't you think? Jesus Christ. Sweet I, I, Jeebus Crisp. Whatever. Whatever. I don't, I don't care enough to ask to be a part of that review, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. I'm surprised I hadn't asked you already. You're the comic book person. I know everything that's ever 
been known about comic books, and I'm super duper excited about every single comic book movie. All 9,675,423 of them. And then there's the ones that aren't Marvel. <laughs> no, no, no. Did you see, did you see the... Um, Wired, I want to say, just put out a, a video kind of breaking down superhero movies at the box office right now. And this year, superhero movies will take up about 27% of the box office. Yeah. That's not that big. It's a trend that's got legs, I'll give it that. It's a trend that's got legs, but at, they were saying at the time, uh, the, the other big comparison is with Westerns, mm -hmm. you know, because back in the day, Westerns were everywhere. And it's pretty comparable. Westerns took up about 25% of the marketplace. But remember, back in the day, they didn't have as many movies playing. So, like, that was yeah. a bit, Westerns were a bigger deal. Yeah. So it's like, we have to put this into a little bit of perspective. They're not dominating the movie-going experience. They just happen to be dominating the box office. Yeah. I wonder if there's like a trend that there's always a there's always a flavor of the decade that takes up about twenty seven percent. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have that in the in the kitchen. There's that ch the flow chart of like the, all the movie genres and how they fluctuate through the ages. It's fun. One quarter of the no, it's it's big, but it's not dominating. I twenty seven percent is big, but it's not. It's pretty big. It's, it's not, not a majority. Big. It's not the only thing that's out yeah, there. It's not a majority or 75% right. or right. just the preponderance. I don't... Is this a puzzle? Oh, that's box office, not Oh, like that's all true, yeah. Not so right, nice. right. That's just mo in movie theaters. That means yeah. there's nobody to blame but us. Yeah. It's true. But so that means that they're d disproportionately... Well... They're they're licensed by big name with big names too, yeah. which is also part of why they're disproportionately profitable. Twenty seven percent won't win you an election. It might if the vote is very divided. Twenty percent of that was Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, but that's oh sure, that's what that takes care of most of the yeah. the non superhero stuff is Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I don't think that's a joke. I think it, that. Probably is what it's going to end up being, right? Um, this Trek movie is going to make a lot of money. It's not. Is but it not? It well, it opened to $60 million, The What about the Which in terms of blockbusters isn't a lot. What about the reboot that I'm not going to mention? You can mention it. it. It's doing better than that. Okay. What? Ghostbusters. I was wondering how much it was making. Mediocre? Okay. To bad? I was just curious. Ghostbusters? Is yeah. not yet. Yeah, not doing well. That's that's in that's in it's not in bomb territory, but it's in. For what they spent on it, it's very disappointing. It's in what's what's less than a bomb like flop, or is flop in bomb territory? Flops in bomb territory. It's it's a it's a lackluster. Also it's lackluster. ran. Yeah. That's a, that's a good way to put it. It's just lackluster. And again, so is Fury Road, and that's like the best movie of the last forty years. Was Fury Road a flop? It was it, or it lackluster. Was, was it was it lackluster. It was never never one in the box office. Really, everyone I know saw it, and almost all of them liked it. Except it me. was it was beat out by um what was that what was it bridesmaid not bridesmaids two no god was there yes a, there was not a bridesmaids <laughs> it might not have been bride bridesmaid it was some kind of female lead comedy yeah yeah oh sisters S something. <laughs> Something we got Something. we we've got vaginas. <laughs> oh, oh the 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 pitch the, perfect two. The pa the pap smear sisters. Yeah, I pitch, remember that. <laughs> pitch perfect two. Okay. <laughs> pitch perfect two was a pretty big movie. Yeah. It's a sad one to lose out to. Uh, I never yeah. even heard of the first one. Never even heard of pitch perfect. A pitch perfect. Uh, that's a uh, that's an all ages thing too. I think. Yeah, right? Okay. So. It's a different ball of wax. Yeah, so you're going up against a whole different audience. Mad Max, three hundred eighty-four million. Pitch Perfect, two hundred eighty-five million, which is wrong. I don't think Mad Max was never in top on the box office, though. It might have had legs. Mad Max had a great fucking word of mouth, mm -hmm. but it was number two the first week it was out. I don't think it was ever number one. That's the question. Was it ever number one? Find it out. Yeah. Boxofficemojo.corn. 
What about like uh, when, what? when 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 Hollywood is looking at the success or failure of a film, mm -hmm. that first week is extremely important because percentage wise, yeah, that's where they make the biggest cut. I think they get like ninety percent of the first week, and then it's the second week where the the actual the theater theaters. gets a higher and higher percentage the more weeks the film is out. Oh, okay. Oh, how big of a percentage of that is is the all ages stuff? Your Dories, your Secret Life of Pets. What do you mean? The percentage of which of the box office? Oh, you mean for the year? I'm not sure. Okay. Probably a lot. That's oh, confident. yeah. That's probably number two. It's huge. Animated is probably number two. Not just animated, like fam family films, like G-rated G stuff, I'm sure, is yeah. giant. That's what I'm thinking. Giant. Fury Road and Ghostbusters had the same budget. Is that true? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Fury Road is so much more outside and big and epic. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so wonder where all that money went in Ghostbusters, which yeah. looks like crap. Ghostbusters is a lot of CGI and a lot of indoor scenes. Uh, Fury Road has CGI too, which just integrated very well. Mm -hmm. It's it's mixed with some good practical effects, and and why it's good is because you don't really notice it while watching the movie. It doesn't draw attention to itself. It's like, look at me, I'm fucking CGI. There's like one or two shots. Yes, I'm sure you'll that see really more of me than you did before. That really how phony they are <laughs> up to the heavens, like the end shot. I really kind of hate. Fury Road, the 3D shot, the blatant pandering 3D shot. Oh, I, I, I can't the, think of that. When the truck crashes at the end and the guitar flies at the camera and then stabs oh. back, <laughs> and then the steering wheel goes right towards the audience. Oh. That looks awful. <laughs> Otherwise. All right. Where was I at over here? Lonely Battle Machine, 322, says, Hey, Rich. Hey, Karen. N nothing to check? Nothing? Uh -uh. Well, this is probably why. You Karen, know what? I'm here, all the, I'm here all the time. I'm old news. Karen's new. Let's all say hi to Karen. I read more of the comment. There's a good reason for oh, it. Oh, okay. okay. Congratulations on your upcoming wedding. So there I'm very we go. glad you okay. weren't mentioned. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not going to do it like an open marriage or something. <laughs> we're not, you're not going to talk about my upcoming wedding? My second wife? I just converted to Mormonism. It's going to be great. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> big love or big, whatever that is. Big love. <laughs> Here's a tip to I use did. for your honeymoon. Use it to buy yourselves a nice cheese or a beverage such as milk. Enjoy. A nice a nice cheese. I, I do like a, a good bit of dill Havarti. Mm. Only child says. Hi, Jack. <laughs> there Karen we go. Oh. and future Mr. Karen. There you go. Have any of you watched Penny Dreadful? It's kind of a compilation of several classic Victorian horror stories, and it's great. The first two seasons are on Netflix. I have not. It mm -hmm. sounds awesome. The Penny uh, Dreadfuls were those like really cheap novels, like pulp novels yeah. that you could buy for a penny, and then they had like like half penny Dreadfulers or something. I mean, they sure. just. I I like cheap pulpy horror, so yeah, yeah. I, I might give that a yeah. Give I that like a cheap look. pulpy sci-fi too. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, thank you. Tip. Thank you for the tip. Yeah, the the tip and the tip. We've the, been watching a lot of Stranger tip, yeah. Things. Oh really? <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get to it. All right. Anonymous says, <laughs> "I am a foreigner running a role playing game for my friends about wizard gang violence set around Illinois." <laughs> wizard there, gang violence. Wizard gang violence. Nice. Are there any local or generally American urban legends or conspiracy theories you like? Um, we had a local thing here, and I don't know if this was like an everywhere America thing, if everyone had this. Haunchyville. Huh? Remember, have, did you guys ever hear of Haunchyville? No. Haunchyville was uh, the rumor around school was it was a colony of midgets. Um, that lived, you know, on this very specific road. I escaped. <laughs> and um, they were protected by a giant albino. And so if you uh, ever went... Are you uh, yanking my chain? Huh? <laughs> no, no, well, the, well, this was the urban, this was the urgent urban myth, is 
is that it was a, a, a colony or a, a commune of midgets. And they were protected by a giant albino, seven foot tall I've albino. Never heard this. No. This is this is a real thing. I was and, wondering you know, if Jack's making it up on the fly. There is w- there was one specific road, and and everyone who went down there, like we're going to Hunchyville this weekend, they'd come back with the exact same story that they got chased out by the giant albino riding a truck, and they swear they saw some midgets, and the the houses were you know they all had a very similar story. I didn't find out till years later that the joke with Hunchyville was that that it was a joke like Hunchville yeah. never existed but this was a real thing that went around our school colony of midgets protected by a giant albino that would chase you off their property if you tried to drive down this one particular street you mean so Hunchville is- didn't exist you mean this wasn't real no. it wasn't really a seven foot albino protecting a, an enclave of midgets ha- no no not Hunchville 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 yes no because they're writing a story i think it should be noted that this is something extremely local to like just your school R- well that's a running joke they asked for, for a local. local urban myth very and that's extremely local that's what i got that's, that's what i got and, has, and you, i mean like a local urban Illinois. myth like like resurrection cemetery supposedly has resurrection, resurrection mary. mary who uh I don't know what, what exactly happens to her, but she supposedly like walks across the street. She hitchhikes. And asks, yeah, and asks people for rides, and they they give her a ride, and then um like they look over and she's gone or something, or what? or they let her you know they let her out and she wants to be let out at the cemetery. If if you're actually you know concerned about the writing Chicago a story South and Silvers. actual urban legends, look up Resurrection, Resurrection Mary. Mary because if you're talking about local in Illinois, that's a big one. Yeah. Resurrection Mary is a big one. Yeah. What's the cemetery where they supposedly have like the, the finger indentations on the gates every now and then? Which cemetery is that? Is that also a resurrection cemetery? That I'm not sure. There's supposedly stuff going on in Graceland, which is where all the movers and shakers of the turn of the 20th century, late 19th, were buried. There's there's um, there's um, the one, I can't think of it right now, something, something. There's one where, where like supposedly it's haunted by the ghosts of, of a circus train that Something's rest. Showman's rest, I think, where we're supposedly, I think that's the one supposed to be haunted by like ghosts of elephants and stuff and some circus train that crashed and burned or caught on fire or something. And then um, Bachelor's Grove. Yeah. Which uh, in the Chicago suburbs, the south suburbs, there's this infamously haunted cemetery. It's one of the most haunted places in, <laughs> in the country. Or so Richard Crow, the ghost hunter who used to make his living giving tours, set claimed. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it's it's fairly famous in the local area. Yeah. Bachelor's Grove. And what was that one supposed to be? It's basically abandoned, right? They don't use it as a cemetery right. anymore. Right, but I mean, what was its shtick? A bunch of different things. These okay. floating orbs and pictures and whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of gook on the lens. I don't remember any specific story. It's just Darby Ghost. <laughs> yeah, basically. But Resurrection Mary is something very specific. And if you're writing a story, that's that's one to look into. And Resurrection Mary will be easy to find, and you'll find a bunch of stuff about her. And Ghost story, supernatural, and very much an urban legend. And that's what, in like Chicago Ridge or something? That's, something. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's a little... It's, it, it's a little bit south of the furthest south reaches of Chicago. Because we're from south of the city. We were near Bachelor's Grove. That was that was in our neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking of Resurrection. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Anonymous says, Dear Dingai, plural of dingus. <laughs> I like it. Thank you for that Greek lesson. I like Dingai. Greeking lesson. Two dollars for the science men's analysis of Ghostbusters. And for generally keeping level heads when everyone wants to scream and ban things they disagree with. P.S. VR. VR? <laughs> like, I'm willing to try VR. I'm just I'm just skeptical that they're where they need to be for it to really work. But I'm skeptical that it's not going to make me motion sick. Yeah. I'm I'm skeptical about that too. Oh but. yeah, no. They, it, uh, Which would detract from the it's, enjoyment. It's just not. It's not where it needs to be yet. We we could get a VR, and have Midlothian. Is that where Bachelor's Grove is? That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Sorry. Okay. Oh yeah. No. 
like we could have a really fun couple of streams. We'll play some VR games. Oh, we'll fall around the room. It'd be hilarious. And then everyone would forget about it because yeah. there's no games. Like there's yeah. no there's no what do they call that? Like hook. The software that you need oh. to buy. You know, the software that will oh. make the system. Like you, you need a Nintendo to play Mario. Platform killer or whatever they call it. The platform maker. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Genre killer? I don't know. That's you not you it. need you know, like you needed an NES so you could play Mario. Yeah. Right? You mm. needed a Super NES so you could play Super Mario. <laughs> you needed a Genesis so you could play Sonic the Hedgehog. Exactly. It, it has its one... Li- that is a killer app. You needed an Xbox so you could play Halo. Exactly. Everyone has their one thing, and VR doesn't have it yet. Yeah. You need an iPad. or you Sorry, you need an iPod because it fits a million songs on it. Yeah. Yeah. There's no compelling hook to get you to buy right. it yet. System seller. Yeah, maybe it's just as easy as system seller. Maybe that's the, the word I'm looking for. Killer app. Also, Killer that's a good apps. one. Thank you, I have higher ground. Like, there's, it, there's a... I, I want to say there's a, a real word for that. Jack hates VR because it's not Apple. Oh, if Apple came out with a VR, I'd buy it one, instantly. That's not true. We were just talking about smartwatches. I have yet to buy an Apple Watch. And this is platform agnostic, although I hear it works a little better on Android. This is my Pebble round that I'm Cameron in love with she, because I can match it to great, my clothes and all that. How great the, the Pebble I know some and people I can with Dick Tracy it. <laughs> I can talk to people. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, not, I'm also not sold on smartwatches, but also I'm not a watch person. So... So, uh, just going back for a second, I'm just thinking about something. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily an urban legend, but uh, wasn't that serial killer during the World's Fair? Wasn't that Chicago World's Fair? Oh, H.H. Holmes. That was Chicago World's Fair, the Columbian Expedition in 1893 or something. It's not necessarily an urban legend, but it sounds like it could be one. They're making a movie. They're making a movie about the whites. I think it's called, like, uh, it's Devil in the White City is a book, and I believe they're making a movie based on the book. Do you want want to tell the story about what he did? Okay, he was like a... I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to miss something, but he was like this complete sicko who like retrofitted his house with like soundproofing and, and chains. and. Well, he had it just, built. He had like torture yeah. chambers built into this house. So he what? could kill these women and sell them for medical experiments and stuff. He and had he, like, like po- he had like, like trap doors that would lead him into a cell and like he would turn on like a nozzle and poison gas would fill the room they were in. And he, he built a murder house. He built a murder, a murder hotel. Yes. And during the World Fair, when everyone was staying at hotels, he would kill prey women on, who were in, prey on in from out of women. town. Single women. And he was he was handsome and charming. Oh my God! And he was awful. preying on people, and that, and that was during the time. Uh, was it Larson? I think wrote the book. Yeah. And I read it, but um, you know they're going to make a movie about it, and they're going to ha- like I think they're going to CGI the White City, which is great because you're going to get it. You know, like an immersive view. The of White City was what they called the World the Fair. The White City was the the Chicago the Chicago World's, World's Fair. Fair buildings, the whole compound, which was, I think, largely plywood painted white to try to look like marble. <laughs> Most of it burned down within a couple of years. Uh, one of the museums is still there that was built for that. Eh, it's plywood painted white. It's fine. And yes, yes, Mr. Chicago Shai Smell. It was Todd, yes. His murder house was built from scratch to be a murder house. Yes. Oh my God! How yep. awful. Not necessarily an urban legend. But it sounds like it could be one, and it's an Illinois story. It's it not be. a legend, though. I mean, he no, was, he he was, was genuinely prosecuted. I mean, they found the stuff. I mean, he was he was like a Jeffrey Dahmer or something. He was a sicko, but he was real, absolutely real. Ugh. But an infamous uh, Chicago local. Well, local for there. I'm not too up on Milwaukee murders, except uh, Dahmer, of course. Everyone knows that Everyone knows Dahmer. Everyone knows Dahmer. Everyone knows Dahmer. He made sausage out of women. I don't know, did he? I think he just mostly sold people for um, for medical experiments. Because he could make money selling them to, like, <laughs> Oh, oh you, the stuff. Chicago Cadavers? guy. Not, Dom, not Dahmer. No, no, yeah, no, no. H.H. No, H. Holmes. Yeah, H.H. H. Holmes. Dahmer didn't make sausage. He just ate him. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> might have committed insurance fraud by taking payouts from the family <laughs> killed. I could see that. H.H. H. Holmes. Sure, sure. <laughs> Next on HGTV, Murder House Flippers. I would love that. I would love an episode of HGTV about Murder Houses. <laughs> now, are we flipping them to or from Murder from House? From Murder Houses. That's I, what I was hoping. I so love oh. that idea. Uh, like, I love those shows, those, like, house fixer-upper shows. And so they're like, like the f- whole first half of the episode is just like looking at dungeons and how creepy that. Now, what are we gonna turn this rape cave into? I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking a breakfast nook. 
Yeah. But then they like <laughs> turn everything into some kind of weird what? thing. Like, why don't we staple plastic broccoli onto the ceiling? <laughs> what if we added in another poison gas nozzle? <laughs> oh. That'll be the shower. <laughs> We could make this one themed. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and this was this house was built before the sob pendulum was in style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll turn this the saw pendulum. We'll put a wet bar in here and we can slice our meat here. We might want to sanitize this a little bit first. I mean, it all works. It all works. <laughs> Murder house. Flippers. Well, these hardwood Murder floors flippers. have to go, so we could put in a blood sluice gate. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine the pain it would take to to clean up all these carpets? No, no, no. no. <laughs> proper drainage. We need proper drainage in here. But it's classic, you know. We need like they have the repurposed stuff where they take the wood from the murder house wood, you know, repurposed. Oh, cheesy. We're gonna we're gonna retake the the bloody floorboards and make them into a coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sweetheart. Sean, a sicko, possibly. <laughs> I like that. Can't you be both? <laughs> kind of like Harley here. Sean says, when will Hollywood be desperate enough to start giving us movies like Robocop versus Predator versus Batman versus Archie? That is the end result of getting ideas from comic books versus movies and or clones. Uh, you know. The comics have done Archie versus uh, The Punisher. There's a lot of comics have that haven't yep. been touched at all. The Archie just happens to look identical to a mobster the Punisher is hunting down. I want to see a... I wanna Antics see. ensue. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna okay, see, I want to read that. Ooh, I want to see too, a Netflix actually. original yes. saga. You've read Saga at all? Yeah. I need to no, I haven't. I, I, I know you're fond of it. <laughs> Archie versus the Punisher. It's real. I, it's I, real. I'm, I'm buying yeah. it as soon as the stream. Well, they is had over. like Archie, like an undead zombie Archie series. Did they? Yeah. Uh, Afterlife with Archie. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Which I read a little bit of it. Actually, it was pretty good. That that was my co my comic of uh, of reading back in the day was Archie. Mostly just because that's what my mom would buy me when I was very young. I, I was all up in the Archie comics. Because it's wholesome. Because it's whole. Well, and more so, lovely. they're the comics that were sold, you know, at the corner drugstore. And so. Yeah, and at the supermarket checkout lines. Oh, even. Jack likes comics. I'll get him to comic books. That's my mother. Uh, so I'm, they I'm were kind of fun and fun. cute and charming. Yeah. And when they're you're fun. that age, you think... Archie and them, they're so sophisticated and grown up. That, oh, that's the only thing. It's like, is this what high school is like? You get yeah. to drive around in cars and eat cheeseburgers all day? I love it. Yeah, basically. I mean, that's kind of it. <laughs> that is know? also all high school is about. That's Archie's demographic is <laughs> is their real demographic is like nine-year-olds. Yeah. Absolutely. TMNT Batman graphic novel. That, that might be interesting. I really liked the Ninja Turtles oh. Ghostbusters one. Oh no! Um, uh, Freddie Freddie Williams Jr. did that friend the, of the show. I I've uh, I've friend read, read Letter Which Media. one? The Ghostbusters? No, uh, TMNT uh, meets the uh, meets uh, Batman. The Turtles and the Shredder and the Foot Clan get sucked through a portal into Gotham City. Is that like a Batman sixty six Batman? Or? No, it's modern Batman. Modern, modern Batman. Batman. You would hate it. Oh, I wouldn't necessarily it's, hate you know it, what? but it's, I really do like the Batman 66. I, I Batman. haven't finished it. It's a really, the, the first, I've read the first three books. It's really fun. It's a really fun book. Read, the, read so the Ninja that's Turtles a, Ghostbusters Cross. It's cute. <laughs> See, that's like fun fan service, you know. Yeah. It's the kind of thing I would wait till it's done. I don't want to read that like month by month. Oh, I was into but, it, yeah. Yeah. Now, I know you get to see my knees. The camera's a little wider, so you get to see my shiny white knees. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, you know he's got legs. How's, how's, how's the, the show? How's the Pokemon hunting going? By the way, uh, I haven't been doing it. No, you, you, you know why? Because he can't hunt for Pokemon anymore. Why not? There's some kind of weird glitch going on with the game. No, they oh yeah, there's a weird glitch, so he can't hunt for Pokemon anymore. They've took out all the Pokemon hunting, and with the most recent update, this this th these these developers rich, they are doing everything they can to piss yep. everyone off. The most recent update that like got rid of all the footprints and like you can't hunt Pokemon anymore. Fuck it. They've now made it more difficult to catch Pokemon. 
Is this like a revenue, reven, sucking revenue out of people better move? Yeah, because now they have to buy more poke, Pokeballs and stuff like that. It's harder to catch Pokemon. You can no longer hunt Pokemon. These these guys are holy dickheads. Yeah, they're just going to turn people off. Yeah. Just like Farm Farmville made has turned me off. Mm. Yeah, so no, I, you know what? I've been like out for walks, haven't, haven't picked it up because there's no fun in it anymore. There's there's no more active participation in Pokemon Go. Yeah. Like before, you know, you'd go out and walk, and all of a sudden, oh, you'd see a Pokemon. Maybe you want yeah. it. Oh, hey, got a little closer. Okay, guys, walk being diverted. Let's go this way now, yeah. you know, to hunt for the Pokemon that you want. But now you don't know when you're getting closer, so there's no more interaction with the game. They have a reason for taking that out? Too many people walking off of cliffs? <laughs> Too many people trespassing on other people's property? <laughs> no. I, that I, could I, be it. That I, could be it. Concern. From from what I have heard is there was some sort of there's some sort of communication problem between the game and the Google Maps server. Yeah. And so the functionality is not working. And so then instead of having the three footprints appear everywhere, they just took all the footprints out until they can fix the situation. Mm-hmm. They haven't said this though because they're incredibly bad at communicating with everyone. <laughs> This is all wild theories. They're too yeah. busy raking in the Benjamins and they oh, don't give a crap. They were making so much money. They're, it was estimated that they were making like $6 million a day in the first week for a free yeah. game. The game yeah. is free. It's all in-app purchases. Well, they're all free. Right. But, you know, right. <laughs> free. So I actually have not played for a while because it's not fun anymore. I'm going to wait until they update it, and by the time they update it, I might not care. Well, I have been meaning to... I'm reading been... that they've updated it so you can't bike and... After, um, I noticed that after uh, Sunday stream. How does it know if you're biking or not? Just Because you go faster speed. going, yeah. I, I hopped on my bike and I was like, oh, I'll just, you know, because I, I usually bike here. I didn't bike here today because it was raining earlier. And, and I noticed that I had some eggs hatching and my eggs did not. And so it's like, done. I'm fucking done with you, game. Yeah. yeah. Biking should count. In the, in the game, in the real well, Pokemon game? Maybe they're game? afraid people are going to bike into traffic or something and I not guess. pay attention. And you, you can't walk into traffic? This is true, but you can, you know. It's, they, they have done, no, no, God. well, oh, there are. There are there are third-party apps that spoof your GPS location to find all the Pokemon. I could just, I could just do that and play from home. That's not really in the spirit of the game. And they've shut down all of the websites that popped up telling you where the Pokemon locations are. It's the f- fuck it. it. Everyone everyone agrees. Pokemon Go sucks now. Yeah, I had tried to mess with it a little, and I was like, well, you know, I'm moving. I'll I'll mess with it when I've got some more time sure. after I finish working with this at this location, and I'm off for a little while. And it's like now it's like you just told me, and I'm like, yeah, I think I'll just go delete it off my phone. You know, it's no fun. <laughs> it's no fun. Unfortunately, it was for like a week. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, there were there were people at, at my work mm. walking around looking for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, it, it's it was a lot of, and I'm a, I'm a big <coughs> Pokemon fan. I've played almost all the Pokemon games, except for the most recent ones. And so I'm like a big Pokemon fan. It was and it was really fun. Like my kids were having a great time. Yeah. We go for walks. We get outside. Talking to people in the neighborhood, like, "Hey, you play Pokemon too?" I saw a thing on on the <laughs> no, internet where one over. of the one of the animal shelters said, "Ask about our Pokemon dogs." I mean, I guess they're taking dogs that are relatively low maintenance, where you, they know they're not dog aggressive or people aggressive, so you can kind of half pay attention and take them for a walk. And it right. was like, "Ask about our Pokemon dogs." You know, people come in, go to the animal shelter, <laughs> grab a dog, go for a stroll, <laughs> exercise, <laughs> happy animals. Right. And this utopia has been destroyed. Okay. <laughs> and I wouldn't mind it. You know, I mean, I wouldn't spend it ton of money but you know it does, things don't have to be completely free if they're fun but well and if they work yeah and know? if they work yeah oh well i'm sorry yeah it's you I'm know so what sorry. it's gonna be a it's gonna be okay because no man's sky comes out next week so i won't feel like going outside anyway <laughs> <laughs> Well, Which you can play No Man's Sky on your bike. I don't know how long <laughs> it would work, but you could. You get a really long cord on that PS4. Or you could just get, like, one of those like extra bikes. You get a generator, hook it, hook it up to your pedals, and you have to go fast enough to play No Man's Sky. There you go. <laughs> Like, like if you want your if you want your ship to move, you have to you have to pedal. And they're like one of those kids' games, you know, like they got the kid extra bike. Oh, the yeah, parents yeah, yeah. buy their oh, man. kids with the best of intentions. Oh man, oh man. 
Pokemon. Anonymous says, love you guys, long time. <laughs> Miami Vice is the best TV show ever. Mm. When someone dies in Tubbs' arms, Crockett doesn't even call an ambulance, but Tubbs gives Crockett's hugs when his bitches die. Okay. Anonymous says. <laughs> you read it. You read the thing. I love making you read the shit that comes it to is my an mind. But Miami Vice is really good. Stranger Things is okay, but Miami Vice is awesome. Is this just a ploy to get us to talk about Stranger Things? Or a ploy to talk about Miami Vice? My mother's crazy about Miami Vice. Actually, yeah, she should be. It's a fantastic show. If it was a ploy to get us to talk, pl- a ploy to get us to talk about Stranger Things, and it's failed because you're not ta- you are now talking about Miami Vice. Well, I was talking about Ma- trying to talk about Stranger Things. You said we get to it later, so yeah, I said yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm, we need to derail the conversation. We're so. giving people time who have not uh, seen it. You know, to still enjoy the stream. With uh, no spoiler. See, you, you, you've got your new NASA shirt. I do. I've, I've got this thing. This is fucking awesome. And we both bought shirts that, that, that match, although we didn't really feel like being twinsy twinsies, with the <laughs> classic 66 Batman logo. Chat, Chat, two questions. One, why is this shirt awesome? Specifically, why is this awesome? And two... What is its glaring flaw? Because it fits and it's, it's oh, okay. 100% cotton. No, I, don't know. I know what its glaring flaw is already, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah. What's it say on my hat? It's a classic White Sox logo hat. Uh, can I was, that, was that close enough? <laughs> and this is a NASA shirt, indeed. It has one glaring flaw. It's not that glaring. It's glaring. It's See, glaring. Well, it's it's they'll, an it's they'll, a, they'll figure it out. It's, it may it be out. a historic inaccuracy, but I thought that it was an improvement when they. Oh no! It's still a great shirt. Choice. It's still a great shirt. No, I, I mean I think when they made that particular change in the turtles, oh, that it was sure. for the better. Uh. Somebody got it. No non. A lot of people are saying colors. Uh, they're, they're right. No, they're, they're right. Not, my... not on E I O T A. It says different color bandanas. That, yeah, yep, that's it. It's Specifically, not, the bandanas. It's not just that they're in color. The, oh, the original, yeah. original this, turtles. This shirt, the art in this shirt, this is like classic original black and white comic book Ninja Turtle art. This is Eastman and Laird art. And uh, the glaring error is that because the colors of the bandanas wasn't important, the comics were in black and white. On the covers, when they, whenever there was some kind of color, all of the bandanas were red. Yes. Yes. But I, I think it's prettier in the different colors. Mm. That's fine. I, I can understand when you're making it a kid show. There's a good reason to, oh, yeah. to have all the bandanas be different colors. Well, and you know what? The art is still so pretty enough. It doesn't really matter. It's a great shirt. Yeah. But I saw the shirt, and I'm like, oh, that's Eastman and Laird art. I, I had to buy it immediately. <laughs> Even though the, the the mandanas are the wrong colors. The humanity. <laughs> oh, the humanity? <laughs> the heck is that? What, what is happening? And oh. they're babies? Now they're, they're just... They were a different style of art there. All right, where were we at? Young Bubby says... If you like Stranger Things, might I recommend Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. It explores a dark and terrifying world running parallel to our own. And you can play as a lost boy. No, I don't give a shit about I, vampires. No, and I know that I've I've seen that game on Steam before. That's a, that's a setup right there. Do you get to go bite <sighs> people? They're, set, they're setting us up. That's a, one of those, like, notoriously... Uh, Notoriously bad games. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. No, because so, I mean the idea of a game where like you could be a vampire and run around biting people's necks might be just fun for the novelty. Yeah. Yeah, that could be fun. Agreed. Especially if it had a sense of humor about it. <laughs> like I don't know. You Tastes like Coca-Cola. You do get to bite people. Well, that's a plus right there. It might be the only plus for all I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've heard I, I think that's supposed to be one of those notoriously bad games. Okay. A lot of the chat is disagreeing. Mm. 
Jack maybe is, I'm thinking. Maybe I'm thinking Jack the wrong is, one. Jack is always wrong. There's probably been multiple Masquerade games. Maybe, maybe that's. Uh, yeah, I just don't give a shit about no Vampire the Masquerade. This franchise does nothing for me. Nothing. Well, there it you go. started out as like a like a Dungeon Dragon style role playing game or yeah. something. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm not wrong. I heard about it in the high schools. Well, I remember that one guy in the bus to one field trip saying that he was a vampire or something. Remember? That was about that, wasn't it? I think so. This is a long time ago. I think so. Oh, God. And those other girls like, had the hots for her, but it was all and just weird. I think I blocked it out of my memory. And then that, that one guy with special needs wandered across the dam to the other side of the river, and we spent hours looking for him, and I was supposed to go babysit, and my mom thought I was making the whole thing up. <laughs> I'm sorry. What you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tell this story properly. Okay. Well, I thought I thought it was more fun and a disjointed ramble. Okay, so that, this, you know what? That disjointed ram, ramble uh, piqued our interest. This was this was you know before Rich and I were even a couple, and we were we were attending the same community college, and we went on a field I trip. Li- I still liked you at the time. Yeah. I'll say that. We went on a field trip to uh, Starved Rock State Park or, or one of the sister state parks that are right near it, which is in um, more east, but kind of in the middle of Illinois, mm-hmm. um, north. It's it's like, I don't know, like 80 miles, no, I don't know, 50, it's miles, a nice state 50 park. miles west, yeah, maybe 50 miles west of Joliet on the Illinois River. And... Um, we went on a field trip and we took the took a bus because neither one of us was really driving much yet. We didn't have our own cars. It was actually a college field trip. Yeah, it was a college field trip with the community college, and uh, we took a bus. And then there were these two girls and a guy, I guess, and they they had the hots for him. And he, I guess, they were into this game, and he was claiming he was a vampire, or maybe he was joking. I don't really know. But we got to this park. And, and we kind of did our own thing. You know, we were wandering around the state park, beautiful state park. And we meet back and there's To get to the bus to, to leave. To the bus. We, we couldn't leave because a special needs student who was yeah. also on the trip who, had gotten himself lost yeah, in he, this giant state park. Somebody, I guess maybe they didn't realize that he had those kind of needs. And he had, it turned out, we, we were all wandering around looking for him and calling his name with the rangers. And and then th- they finally found him. He had walked, I guess he had walked across the dam or somehow or other. He had got himself onto the other side of the <laughs> Illinois River at, at the other sister state park and somebody found him. He was far way off. He, he was, was completely way off. out of I the I guess ballpark. he spent he... like several hours just getting as far away from all of us as he possibly could, <laughs> which might not have been the worst idea, you know. But dude, he was he was off having some kind of Pokemon finding adventure. <laughs> <laughs> the Pokemon that only existed for him or something. I don't know. I really don't know what the guy's situation was. But we finally found him, and the bus was hours late. And I had was supposed to be uh, babysitting, and, and I, I called, you know, and it was a friend of my mother's. And I called, and I explained the situation, and she, she apparently thought I was lying or something. And she was terribly mad that I was so irresponsible to not show up. And I'm like, but, 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 but. but this guy was on the other side of the river. We were wandering with him, and I, nothing I could do about it, it. You know what? It sounds it sounds like a story you made up. It does, right? <laughs> but it was like so many other weird it has, adventures we had in our early life. It was true. It has just enough like si- like strange elements and sympathetic elements. No, no, this boy had special needs, and he got lost, so we had to find him. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Th- oh. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure thing, Karen. And you know how frustrating it is when you actually are telling the truth <laughs> no i just never tell the truth that's my oh, well, that's my plan yeah anonymous says your ghostbusters science video reached reddit front page two times today first time it was deleted the second time it was shadow deleted after it reached rank 14 or so that's true yeah it was the and the first one it was deleted because and and uh someone, you can't say anything bad about ghostbusters no because, and because well it, it's like i kind of get it and i kind of don't it was deleted because it was too political. <laughs> and it's like, you agree. <sighs> Ghostbusters has turned into this political thing, which is funny because that was literally the point of the video. Was It's yeah. not about the Ghostbusters movie. They marketed it to be political. Yeah, yeah. And then it was removed for being too political. And it's like, but did you watch the... Uh, I am... 
I am so fucking sick of hearing about right? Ghostbusters. Is it supposed to be a metaphor for something? Like if you like it, you're you're a a, a, a redemocrat and you're a you know Republican. Right. If you do or it's, it, don't, I, all those various it, 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 numbers of boxes they're willing to put you in based on whether or not you didn't like a bad to mediocre comedy film. Right. No, but it, I mean, it made it to the, it made it to the front page of Reddit, not on the Red Letter Media subreddit, on on the movies. Oh, oh yeah, on yeah. the movies subreddit, which wow. is a bigger wow. subreddit. And unfortunately, it got it got uh, deleted by mods because they didn't want to cause a kerfuffle. <laughs> which which is like right, you have to kind of understand like just talking about that movie causes a kerfuffle. But why? It's just <laughs> just a movie. It's just a movie. Oh yeah yeah. Jeez. Yep. I thought it was fun, but nothing deeper than that. <sighs> it's inferior to the original in every way. It's a pointless film. They have bad chemistry. That, that, yeah, all right. Oh, God, Rich. Griffin, 901 Jesus, says, Rich. Hey, y'all. What comic <laughs> book movie are you most interested in seeing in the near future? One I, that exists? I think Doctor Strange <laughs> is going to be mine because adding mysticism to the Marvel mythos is very cool. Love, pre-rectum. Karen, what do you think about Doctor Strange? Are you a magic person? Do you know anything about Doctor Strange? I, not what? too much. He's not. Mysterio was the one with the with the fishbowl. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. I I always had a soft spot for Mysterio as a Spider-Man villain because he's just so lame, but owning it. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody should draw him as a gumball machine. Right. You know, I I don't know much about Mysterio. Like ma- magic, and like space and god powers is right about when I stopped paying attention to comics because once you get to that stuff, no rules apply. And I really, you know, Spider-Man. He, he's a kid and he's balancing his daily life while fighting supervillains. Like, oh, relatable. Clear, easy rules. He can die. He has to follow the rules of physics. There, there, There's one universe for Spider-Man. And then you, Doctor Strange is like, no, our reality is one of many. No. The- the weird thing about Doctor Strange as the main character in the film mm-hmm. is that I, I think Doctor Strange has always worked best as a supporting character. Like, Spider-Man meets up with Doctor Strange and he goes on this weird mystical adventure <laughs> through the ghost dimension. <laughs> or, <laughs> my favorite part of Doctor Strange is where he gets up and says, Mein Fuhrer, I can walk! Oh, or, no, it's the Doctor Strange Oh, that's look. a different Doctor Strange. <laughs> it's Doctor or, Strange look. Or the Baxter building is, like, infested with goblins. Yeah. And Mr. Fantastic Science Knowledge is useless in dealing with the problem, so he has to consult with Doctor Strange, and mm. then they go on a, a goblin hunting adventure. Yeah. You know. Okay. He's a supporting character guy, and it's weird to see him as a lead. Even though he, he headlined his own well, comic book out for of years. But, to well, look. but also you need him in his own movie. If you want to do the, the wacky adventures in other movies, you need to set him up as a character first. I'm going to say the general population. Even if it's a bad movie, it's just kind of a backstory. Oh, or even if, even if it's just a bland movie. It's like, okay, now everyone knows who Dr. Yeah, Strange is. Yeah. So when he shows up in Spider-Man 12, <laughs> enter the ghost zone or whatever <laughs> Rich's movie is, it, it'll make sense, right? <laughs> so it's like, I'm not, I'm actually, don't, now, don't label me a, 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 a SJW or anything. I'm more excited about the Wonder Woman movie. Yeah. I thought that looked the, from the trailer alone, that looked like something maybe a little different. I am I am equally not terribly interested or dis- disinterested in either one. <laughs> okay, I still want a Black Widow movie. Black Widow movie would be great. You know what? We we do need some spy shit. Yeah. We need some spy stuff. They did in in like season three of Agents of Shield. They finally got to some fairly decent spy stuff and it was a pretty good season we need a spy movie but like I'm I am Jack likes what I do I like women I like women and I like like looking at women and when they fight it's awesome uh, if you want a spy movie they could, they could always do a, a Nick Fury film they haven't done that I wonder why well, they haven't planned that they they have a Hasselhoff version <laughs> They have a sci-fi original David Hasselhoff. Who wouldn't, Nick Fury who wouldn't movie. want to see Samuel Jackson in the Nick Fury movie? Everybody wants to see Samuel yeah. Jackson. In the yeah, Nick Fury for movie. sure. Yeah. Thank you, the Riddle of Steel. No, I, I, 
I was more interested in the Wonder unless, Woman trailer. Unless they, unless they hire Will Smith and they make it a prequel, and then suddenly no one cares. When's the Wonder, Wonder Woman movie coming out? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. This year, maybe? I, okay, I, so I, there's I, a trailer. I mean, it's... There's a trailer. It's going to happen. Was it? It's in production. Does anyone... Actually, that's a good question. Does anyone know when the Wonder Woman movie comes out? Like... Uh... I didn't even know you watched it. No, because nobody watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I, I mean, I've, I'm up on all Marvel things. I've, I've seen, every, I think I've seen every Marvel cinematic universe thing, in, including the TV cinematic universe. That's a quick outfit. They're saying they love your tunnel. My t- oh, sorry. Yeah, I stopped playing. <laughs> oh, it's not because we started talking about comic book movies. That's how much I like comic book movies. Uh, oh, it's not till next year, apparently. Okay. But, but you know, Doctor Strange. What even like even Guardians? Maybe it'll be good. I don't know. I'm not hyped. Like I, I don't even care about Thanos. Thanos is one of my favorite Marvel characters. I, and I know he is. But once you st- like in my head, once you start dealing with the godlike powers, I can't care anymore. Galact- Galactus and stuff. G- right. I just can't care anymore. Thanos' Thanos motivations squir- are so interesting. When are they doing a Squirrel Girl movie? I would love a Squirrel Girl movie. I really want a Squirrel Girl movie. A squirrel Girl <laughs> movie. <laughs> that would be great. That'd be, you know, just to get some humor. If you, you've read, the, you've read of course, the, I'm guessing the comic book where mm. she talks Galactus out of... Galactus I didn't read that one specifically. Like, I've read a couple of Galactose is something different. Galactose? Yeah, no, Galactose. That's like a a sugar. Oh, is that <laughs> like a... <laughs> oh, from chemistry. <laughs> so it was Squirrel Girl Galactose intolerant? She might be. <laughs> Squirrel Girl's fun. Yeah. Squirrel Girl. She doesn't take herself too seriously. Right. Squirrel Girl's fun. Wonder Woman looks interesting. Doctor Strange, I made ma- magic. I just don't care about magic. Oh, there's a book in there. I recommend looking up the video where German kids try, German people try to say squirrel. It's a word that just doesn't come out right for non-English speakers. Like how, some words don't come out right for English speakers. How, do, how does it end up sounding? Like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Like the idea that it's there's even though it's got R E L, it's basically rhymes with swirl, or girl, squirrel. It's cute. Hmm. Barb from Stranger Things as Squirrel Girl. The chat is suggesting. Barb. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, she would be a great. Well, I don't know how good of an actress she is, but just visually. Yeah, she Barb looks just like green. Dorian Green. All she needs is they need to give her some prosthetic buck teeth <laughs> and a tail. Oh, her yeah. hair is perfect. Okay, already. they'll do that in posts. <laughs> yeah. Okay, did you Did true. you see the uh, Anna Kendrick as Squirrel Girl mock-up? No. So, she... Some uh, fan put together a Photoshop of Anna Kendrick as Squirrel Girl. Kind of works. Oh, Barb is perfect. Barb is perfect. She you, looks you want a petition? Barb from Stranger Things. Or is it her name? Barb? The, the, the character's name was Barb. I don't know the actress's name. The, the friend of the girl. Yeah. I mean, girl. The one who, well, spoiler. Yeah. The friend of Nancy. The friend of, yeah, Nancy. I couldn't think of her name. Nancy's friend, Barb. Uh, yes. Oh, would my she, God. Yes. Would yes, she, yes, yes, yes. Would she have to have an adventure in Germany so everyone could say her name weird? Square hair girl. <laughs> it's, look at that. It's square hair girl. Or just a friend or an exchange student running around at yeah, the college yeah. or something. Square, <laughs> an, an enemy, better yet, who's like, curse you, square, 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 curse you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> get, um, what's his name, Baron Zolo? The oh, guy? Yeah, get, yeah, him, yeah. get him as the villain? Nice. Squirrel totally. Girl versus a, a Nazi supercomputer man? I figured it out. I figured out the puzzle. That'll be awesome. I want. I want. They say you're going in a circle, Jack. Yes. And here, I'll show you. So that unlocked this. So Jack's a jerk. Does that mean he's going in a circle jerk? <sighs> Moving right along. <laughs> so I was going in a circle. Sorry. Thank you for noticing. Uh, because I went over here and looked in this little book. Are you this, underwater? No, I don't think so. Okay. And this little book showed this area that I remembered, and it had these these symbols here, you know, and, and it seemed to say go in a circle. And so I took that to mean go in a circle three times. Oh. And so that's what I did. I went over here, and I went in a circle three times. Yeah. And as it turns out, that unlocked the door. Cool. And I got the thing. 
I solved ah. a puzzle. By going in a circle. By going in a circle. So people are saying that it looks like the classic mage screensaver. It kind of kind of does look oh. like an update of that. <laughs> yes. That kind of Wolfenstein-esque. Anonymous says, what made you choose film? I don't know, it was a fun creative outlet. Hey, we got this camera, let's fuck around. <laughs> it's, some, it's something I just did in high school. It was a good creative outlet. Oh yeah, well, remember when we were growing up, it was kind of like the hype, the the prime of home video recorders. Yeah, they were they were pretty readily available, and uh, and our, God, our parents didn't know what to do with them, so they just gave them to us. Well, I've <laughs> seen a remake of The Exorcist starring Rich's mom. Ah! I don't know that a copy exists anymore, but but my mom and my uncles. It was cute. It was sweet. Your mother was was. Reagan and uh, <laughs> they did they did the Exorcist and another one where one of my uncles was a killer clown. Which uncle? Bill. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh jeez. I can't find it. I have no idea what those are. Oh. No, you yeah. gotta find those. They're they're they had, they're they're lost. They time. had classic classic home movies of of his parents' wedding and stuff. Really cute stuff. His father was, looked like kind of like his father is redhead, and and when he was young, he had kind of like a, like Ronald McDonald hair almost. He had, he had an the afro. 70s my dad afro. basically had an yeah, afro. It was the seventies. <laughs> I mean, <it laughs> my mom had a red afro in the seventies too, but hers just died. Everyone had an afro. It was the seventies. Yeah. Is Destroyer said? Karen's voice sounds familiar. Was she one of the real people Mike interviewed in the Phantom Menace Plinket review? No. no. You did hear a voice somewhere, though, in the early days of RLM. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. Where was that? Does she know about this? Come on, away from Mike. Okay. Go. Oh. <sighs> I'll talk loudly so, so people won't hear what you have to say to Kara. I don't even know what he's, she's talking about. No, the people... The people that Mike interviewed in the Phantom Menace review were 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 uh, Jay's friend. What, yep. What's, uh, 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 oh God, I'm drawing a fucking Jesse. Name. Jesse, yeah. Jay's yeah. friend Jesse, Jay, of course, uh, Rich, myself, and uh, Jillian from Feeding Frenzy. Mm-hmm. And if if in case I've never told, I have told the story, but in case you weren't here for the story, uh, me and Jillian, Mike actually snu like snuck up on us to film those mike and jay were helping me film a music video yeah. that jillian was acting in and all of a sudden like mid music video shoot mike goes oh yeah jack by the way do, do you think we could like stop shooting for like an hour because i have this st stupid thing i want to do and i was like what we're, we're shooting this thing he's like yeah just like an hour can we can i just like borrow jillian and you for an hour it's like oh sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you had you had no idea at all before Oh no no none! Like literally, they were just—they were helping me shoot something, and and we shot that in between. He didn't—he didn't tell me what he was gonna do, but like a week or two earlier, uh -huh. I'd actually watched the Phantom Menace with him just to take notes and talk about the movie. Sure, sure. And I think he mentioned something about like you know if you'd asked people to describe these characters, he talked about something like that. It's sure. so like a couple weeks later when he showed up at my door with a camera, <laughs> I had a good idea of what was gonna happen. But he didn't, like, call ahead and say, yeah, I'm going to ask you questions about Star Wars. He sure. Just, he just showed up with a camera. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and that moment in the Phantom Menace review where I, I say, I get what you're doing and it's funny, that was <laughs> that was for real. Like, I finally understood the point he was trying to make. Uh-huh. And so. All good things. That Phantom Menace. Uh, no, Lisa wasn't interviewed for that, for Phantom Menace. All right, so I guess I'll say what 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 where you heard Karen's voice before. Oh sure, who has anyone been speculating? I haven't seen it. Okay, I might just not have noticed. Uh, the United States of No. Oh really? I did that mini documentary about me laughing in the theater. Yeah, yeah. About the the scene where Darth Vader says No in Revenge of the Sith. He called the, my place looking for me, and Karen answered the phone. And he was asking you like where I was, and then. He asked you if you could say no into the phone. <laughs> I don't even remember it. <laughs> well, no, yeah, like for, that. Or, for you, yeah. it was just a phone call. So, like, you wouldn't yeah, remember yeah. it. <laughs> I don't remember Mike asking me to say no. But Someone I mean, said it? Okay. 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 No. I don't, I don't even remember how I said it. 
Um, that that should be the only time, other than another stream, that you have heard Karen. Yeah, I've been in playing Monster Party and, and yeah. Dragon. On stream, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantasy. Tales of Wisteria, Dragon something. Dragon like, Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> dragon who was what and WYSIBUB? Basically, a Dragon Warrior Final Fantasy homage on the... Uh, you know, the handouts. In homage? Jomage? We're not going to get into the homage homage argument, okay? It's homage. Karen wants to say that word in like a really ugly it's way. Homage. You don't say honor, you say honor. It sounds like somebody just like jamming a fork into my ear. But you say it's honor. So ugly. You say honorary, you don't say honorary. People pronounce things different ways. I, I, th I think it's homage. 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 Oh. Homage. Like Amish, people. like Nicki Minaj, it's homage. <laughs> Nicki Minaj is a homage to asses everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Nicki Minaj, <et> toi. <laughs> N oh, Nicki. Sounds a lot better than homage. <gasps> oh, Rich is Rich is sleeping on the couch tonight. It's true. That's true. <laughs> you gotta you gotta be careful now. She's with, she's with you all the time now. Which is actually a, kind of a step up for me. I'm used to sleeping on the floor from my back. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Tomato, tomato, or Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. Sausage. Yeah. We Sausage. have a, we have a city here uh, in uh, southwestern Wisconsin called Beloit. Yeah. B e l o i t. O i t. Beloit. A long time ago, uh, my cousin's then girlfriend at the time was up visiting. They're from California, and she is a very well-educated and proper lady. I know where this is going. Whom I enjoy every once, who I enjoy very much, and uh, we were driving past the sign that said "This way to Beloit," and she goes, "Oh, uh, and what's over in Belois?" <laughs> well, I figured <laughs> Illinois was originally Illinois. Illinois. And and like we have we have a city in the Chicago suburbs, Des Plaines. Yeah. Right. But then we have Des Moines, Iowa. Exactly. Things get pronounced differently. Everything everything is all gobbledy gooble. Yeah. Yeah, or or like Amarillo, Texas, instead of Amarillo. Yeah, I said I enjoy. I do enjoy her, but uh, but uh, Belois. Ooh, ooh, let's go visit Belois. And if you're from here, you go. Why would you want to go to Beloit? We'll go shop at Target. <laughs> yeah. We'll go shop at Target. Target, exactly. <laughs> How do I say rendezvous? There you go. Ooh, nice. And it's a win. It. I'd say rendezvous too. Instead of rendezvous? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rendezvous français? Maybe they, maybe they say like rendezvous? I don't know. Wisconsin, kind of crazy mostly way they German. Um, rendezvous mostly, is the only way I've ever heard it. But not only. Yeah, what other way would you say that? Rendezvous. Rendezvous. Let's have a rendezvous. Rendezvous, like, like comment allez-vous. Rend rendezvous or something, I guess. Yeah, I think it's named after like the Illini Indians. And I probably should know this. The Riddle of Steel says, Look, people, it's one of the things Rich doesn't hate. Or derves. Hi, Karen. Cool to see you. Hi. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things... What's the thing Rich doesn't hate? Does Rich, Rich hate or love Jack's skinny white knees? Uh, Rich, I you're... I think they're sexy. Your thought on my <laughs> knees is very important. Whoa! They're sexy knobby knees. What? Oh, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Now Rich hates them. <laughs> yes, I, I hate no. Jack. I hate Jack's snobby fucking knees. <laughs> you know, uh, they're they're here. You got you get to see my knees, and I'm sorry, but we the camera needs to be wide enough to see all three of us, and so you get some hot knee action. Yeah, they're they're, they're handy for you know hinging your legs. So you're not walking like this. I, I've always it enjoyed makes stairs knees. a lot easier. I know some people who uh, can no longer use their knees, and uh, I, I, I can only imagine that that would suck. So. Sari Chen says, hiya, Jack. Hi, Sari Chen. Have you seen that hilarious new Executor Dragon? Oh, my dear God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have. It's, what is this? It's, it's, a, it's a Pokemon thing. Oh. For the new for the new Pokemon game, they keep on, like, revealing new Pokemon that are going to be in the new Pokemon game. Uh, and so there, there's a Pokemon in the original game. Not Pokemon Go. Something not else. Pokemon Go. The new uh, Pokemon X and Y. Um, 
there's Execute, which in Pokemon is literally a clump of eggs with eyes on it. That's a kind of Pokemon. And then it evolves into Executor, which is a slightly, uh, which is a, a tree with egg faces, like a coconut tree, but instead of coconuts, it's egg faces. So it's like a, a blastocyst and a beholder had a baby. I don't know what either of... Uh, uh, Beholder's like a, a Dungeons beholder? and Dragons thing that's got like eyes all over it. Oh, you ever seen okay, Big sure. Trouble in Little China? And Blastocyst yes. is like a ball of cells before you start to, your parts start to become different oh, kinds okay. of things. Oh, okay, yes. That's exactly what the egg thing is. And so then it's a tree with egg faces, and now they have uh, turned it into a really tall tree with egg faces. That's, that's it. Okay. That's it. <laughs> it sounds nightmarish. Yeah. I, okay. I, uh, I, I just, I just, I just. Oh, Sun and Moon. Oh, is Sun and, see, I haven't played X and Y. Sun and Moon is the new Pokemon. Is it X and Y because like you can breed them or something, or could you always breed them? I don't know anything about. When when Pokemon is released, there are usually two versions of the game released, and the two ver- versions have slightly different Pokemon in them. So if you really want to catch them all, you have to buy both versions. Ah, okay. This is. <laughs> I thought it was like, you know, when I had that dogs, that video dogs game where I could like, you know, get the boy dog and the girl dog yeah, and make yeah. puppies. You can. You can breed Pokemon. Okay. You give them to a, a Pokemon daycare person and you put two Pokemon in there and they can uh, they can make eggs. Is there like a little heart that shows up over them? No, or? no. The, the Pokemon breeder goes, oh, an egg came out of a Pokemon. What? Rich. Rich is right. Pokemon, Pokemon. <laughs> Are they like bees where like, you know, I, you know, where just, you don't have to be fertilized right. to make one? You we, know, the unfertilized eggs are male. The, the mystery of life. Okay. Ah, the mystery of Pokemon fucking, you know. We don't know. <laughs> okay. And we're done talking about Pokemon. Yeah. <clears throat> you can wake up. And now, reproduction Rich. and bees. <laughs> Anonymous says, how dare you? Who do you think you are? Uh, this is Karen. I have mentioned that is Jack. Hi. We- oh, I thought I was being taken to task for something. <laughs> Hyperactive Slob says, Vampire the Masquerades is a shitty game. It's notoriously awful, but considered a horrible fucking game that I would shit on. It's made by the same people who did whatever rumor or second coming out by Obsidian. I changed, like, half the words in that, because I just don't give a shit. Okay, Vampire so it's a game Masquerade. that people have wildly varying opinions about, like most things in this world. I don't care. I don't care about fucking vampires. Ooh. I don't especially love RPGs. There's nothing here that would draw me in. Yeah, the only vampire I was ever really into was the Count from Sesame Street. Nah, he was cool. <laughs> Come on, he was the best character on Sesame Street. Um, the coolest. Well, on Oscar the Grouch. Well, you know, always been fond of that Grover. How about Snuffleupagus? Eh. Big, big, dumb, big, dumb, furry elephant. Like a woolly mammoth without knee. Right, Tusks. like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Nothing. Or ears, I think. The Riddle of Steel says, Too political is the excuse Reddit mods use to get rid of shit that goes against their own politics. That very well could be. I, I believe it. I absolutely believe it. When you do not own the platform, you sometimes find yourself on the losing end of other people's biases. Absolutely. Absolutely. Reddit, Reddit, you know, that's what the mods are hopefully there for is to weed out the weird stuff. But they they are are men and men have weaknesses. Yeah, they are human. And while it might be frustrating, there are other platforms. There are. Like this one. Yes. The Riddle of Steel says, what do you think of the people who, in the wake of Ghostbusters, wrote articles about how it's better than the old one, and the old one was never really that good? Other idiots who are trying to justify the new movie's existence. That's what they are. The old one was not perfect. It's pretty damn close. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's pretty damn close. Yeah. There, there, There's a... What, what do they call that? The... Um, contrarian clickbait yeah yeah where where it, it goes in waves and you what you want to do is make sure you catch the rising of the wave and so they were writing articles with these big flashy titles the original Ghostbusters wasn't that good hoping to ride that wave of the new one and then eventually like a year or two later it would come back about the wave would come down and go you know that Ghostbusters remake really wasn't all that special 
just so they can ride that contrarian wave to get the clicks. Or, or is it views. an insane amount of bias generating some kind of like Sour's grape-esque response? That, uh, that sentence literally made no sense to me. I want to let you know that. <laughs> they, they need the new one to be good. Because, I don't know, because, because vaginas? I don't even think it's a... Uh, maybe. I liked the movie for reasons that had nothing to do with vaginas. <laughs> I, I'm not... I'm that not, same I, movie done with men would have been cute, too. Although I thought it was kind of I'm interesting not, that they gender swapped. I'm it. not speaking about everybody. But for better or worse, the movie has become highly politicized. I know it has. Highly politicized. Well, and, and so, like, those people who are writing those articles, what's what's in the realm of realistic? Did they actually think that the Ghostbusters movie was better than the original? That's possible. Were they just ha- had a hyperbolic title and some crazy ideas to get clicks? Very possible. Somewhere in between? Very possible. Where, why did Where did we end up in a world where what movie you like or don't like is supposed to be a judge of your character? And if you don't agree with somebody about movies, you know, my favorite color of red is red. Your favorite color is blue. You're stupid. I mean, That's, what, you know. Welcome to the Internet. That's kind of where Seriously. we are. Seriously. That's kind of where we are. The Real Veon says, Karen, now that you're here to stay, I can ask you directly. Are you up to live streaming your and Rich's wedding? Either way, welcome back to Prereq. I hope you are on often. <laughs> we, we are flattered, but I think we might skip that. Well, we'll have to discuss that because honestly, the, the thought had never occurred to me. We never we never got that $2,000 tip, did we? Oh, did you, t- did you tell Karen? No, I didn't. Well, you you might have to break some awkward news to her right about it, it, now. It never happened. I said uh, they wanted you know us to live stream the wedding, and I said uh, if we got a two thousand dollar tip, that I would uh, secretly live stream it without telling you. <laughs> I said I said for an extra one thousand dollars for three thousand dollars, not only would I live stream it, but I would have a speaker, and it would be just like loud enough for you to hear the tips. The yeah. oh my gods during the wedding. Oh, see now, now I'm gonna be like, we're gonna be like, you may kiss the bride, and I'm gonna be checking him for wires. <laughs> <laughs> Open your mouth. Let me look at oh, your. Oh, was feet. it? It was thirty thousand. Okay, because I'm I'm smart enough to know that some insane person might have donated three. Yeah, I, I did say thirty thousand. Well, thirty would. Be so it would have been, you know. You can you can for thirty thousand. <laughs> I might consider live streaming the honeymoon. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward Ter- levels are rising. <laughs> Terrible. You too. No, I love it. Yes, he did go down on one knee. You went down on one knee? He yeah. did. How romantic. You sweet. You're all full of that romantic shit. What did you do? I have like a, one of those Skyrider planes fly by? Or <laughs> Is that what you did, Rich? <laughs> no, I'm asking what Jack did. Oh, I got down on one knee, yeah. I got down on me. It was it was a surprise. My, uh, Lisa was very mad at me be- because I had yet to ask her to marry me. Oh, okay. And our friends uh, were getting married, and you know we had talked about marriage. You know we we both knew we were it was going to happen. And so uh, a couple friends of ours were getting married, and Lisa was involved in the wedding. And so I didn't want to ask her to marry me to take away thunder from my friend's wedding. But, you know, weddings were happening and Lisa was involved and just, just we're not getting married yet. <laughs> and I had already bought the ring and I already made the plan and, you know, like things were happening. But but in her in her head, you know, she, she had a schedule like I'm supposed, mm-hmm. to, I'm supposed to be married. So the night after our friends got married, we go back home and she is in full scowl mode because 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 her you know a very good friends of ours had just been married 
and she's not married yet, and she has no idea that I have the ring in our closet. So she goes to the bathroom, starts taking off makeup. I quick go get the ring, and she comes into our bedroom, and I propose, and she, and 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 I, I have the ring out, and I'm looking at her, and she goes, "Shut up." <laughs> oh no! That that was her response, and I said, "No, really, I didn't want to steal thunder away from our friends. Will you marry me?" And she was very excited. But <laughs> she was very she was very excited, but. You know, it was just one of those situations where she was mad at me. Not like, not mad, but just like one of those like disappoint, impatient. impatient and disappointed. And, you know, and, and I couldn't tell her like, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. We'll just wait till the weddings. Cause that was part of the surprise. But, but, uh, Aww. yeah, you know. there never is a perfect time or a perfectly imperfect time. I oh mean, God. No. Hartree Fokker in the chat says, after I got on my knees to propose to you, did you have to help me up? <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer that question. Don't answer that question. <laughs> I tried. Ow, I really tried. <laughs> she just kind of rolled him over. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went in the back and looked, looked to see maybe we had a power jack. We could just <laughs> got the jack out of my car. <laughs> There. We have not set a date yet. We need to do that. I'm moving up here, you know, one thing at a time. I can only think about like one thing at a time. We're not. I mean, and we're not going to tell you guys when the date is. Yeah, or where. Or it's going to be low key. When or where? Just yeah. one. One of these days, probably. Rich is just not going to be on stream. And, oh, Rich is feeling sick tonight. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen. So don't don't feel sad. Sean says, we need a Squirrel Girl movie where she saves the day at the cost of lots of squirrel-caused damage. And then it, in the sequel, She-Hulk could be introduced as her lawyer, trying to keep her well, out of jail. She-Hulk, eh? Can they do a C Squirrel Girl movie or are they going to CGI all the squirrels? Or are they They'd just going to have, like, tons of squirrel actors? They'd probably I hear you can train CGI. these things, like, click or train them to do a few things. Uh, maybe for the close-ups. pretty smart. They would use CGI. They'd have one squirrel that they they would have like, like a stand-in for the CGI, but maybe ninety-eight percent CGI. Oh. A realistic squirrel, or you think they do like a cartoony squirrel, like extra cute? Depends on what tone they were going for. Okay. I really want a squirrel girl movie, and now I mean I have no idea if she would be up to that particular role or whatever. But mm. that girl from Barb. Stranger Things. Visually, she, she looks just like. She her. looks just like her. Yeah, the squirrel girl's a curvy girl, mm -hmm. and she's got short red hair. Yep, and she's perfect. She's perfect. It probably won't be her. They'll need it. They'll need a bigger name. Yeah, yeah. They, just because that's how it works. But guys in squirrel costumes. Oh, it'll be guys in squirrel, squirrel costumes. Girl, it'll all be glad. John Barrowman, right? Did you see that? Did you see the John Barrowman in Squirrel Girl at San Diego Comic Con? I don't even know who John Barrowman is. You, <laughs> that's I all right. Maybe I should. Uh, you know what? I'm in the same boat here. Oh, really? Yeah. No. Here. See, I usually just figure that whatever it is, I should know it, and it's shameful <clears throat> that I don't. <laughs> I'm a giant pool of pop culture ignorance. Uh, you, he was on Doctor Who. Uh, he was. On, he's on like the Arrow now. He's he's just like a nerd uh, figure. Hold on, score John. So I've seen a few episodes of Doctor Who. It's something I've been meaning to watch more of. I just other things come up. He was on. He was on a, a Doctor Who spinoff show. There it is. Uh, so you know he's he's kind of a you know well known ish nerd actor, and this is how he dressed for Comic Con. <sighs> Somebody said Ellie Kemper from Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, a Squirrel Girl. That's an interesting choice. Yeah. It's the right personality. Right. Yeah. 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 She, she could work. So that's what he dressed like at San Diego Comic-Con. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his, like, little, and his little pose and his tail. He's great. <laughs> Who is he on Arrow? I don't know if if I know. He's, he's a bad guy on Arrow. And he's the only good person on Arrow. Arrow's a show that I watch and I hate. I think it's an awful garbage soap opera show, but I watch it all the time because it's an awful garbage soap opera show. Every actor is terrible except for John Barrowman, who is the only one who understands that it's kind of campy. And so he's he's just all over the place and playing the bad guy and chewing the scenery and, and playing it right. 
He's he's like how do we the dark arrow? I don't know. What. How do we show them this? He's Malcolm Merlin. Yeah. Where's your camera? Like where 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 where? Would oh, I, I think stick someone this? someone linked to it in chat. Oh, okay. Someone linked to it. Okay. Because <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> I you gotta maybe go back because yeah. I clicked on the image. I got already fixed. Kind of used to the Chromebook and. <clears throat> We're already Good back. Engines. We need to be. Right. Do you want to get caught up on tips first? We want to go into Stranger Things. Uh, get caught up on tips. I got a ton. Got, we got a ton. Whoa. Nanam says, I, I don't intend to insult, but might RLM ever attempt to create a genuine or earnest movie? Or were all movies done by the people of the RLM crew always done in this style? Also, hello, Karen. Hi. That's not insulting, you know. No, you you, you no. make comedies. We make we like comedies, and uh, I mean, you know, like a lot of time budget forbids you from. The Long Walk Home kind of pretended to be in earnest for the last <laughs> for the first <laughs> three quarters. It, of it wasn't, and even when it was pretending, it wasn't good. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, and at the time, you were like twenty something, which made you poorly cast to be a grizzled well, middle aged detective. That's the point. That's the point. Yeah. Um, the Recovered, Mike and Jay did The Recovered, which I still haven't seen and was not involved with. You still haven't seen The Recovered? Yeah. Because that was their serious think? horror movie, and there was a no Rich Evans policy. You when mean they Gorilla, made that. Gorilla Interrupted wasn't high art and <laughs> cultural uh, commentary? Uh, yeah. Uh, not Gorilla Interrupted, sorry. The Recovered was a serious movie. I know Jay was in talk, or Jay, Jay was in talks, remember. He wanted to buy the rights to that Milwaukee filmmaker low budget movie and remake it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And that would have been a serious movie. Yeah. Um he didn't get the rights unfortunately. But I don't know. Maybe Space Cop killed them for I mean at least for a little bit for making movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it killed them, but killed them. They're dead. Well, they need, they when need to recharge. When there's something next. we want to do, we'll do it. Thank yeah. you, guys. Bloodbeat. There's a, there's a movie called Bloodbeat. Maybe Western or I love Western or The Western or musical. It's great. Pyrite is Pie all right, is all right, right by, by me. It, it might not, not be real gold, you see. Who do you but think it, manages to sing worse, me or Rich? I mean, oh, we're both pretty it's bad. Me. <laughs> it's me. I couldn't it's carry it to Jack, bucket. tell them. Tell them about doing the score <laughs> for the Western or musical. Tell them the story. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> I have I have nightmares about that score. <laughs> you know, because like I I I can make music, and they're like, just make it really simple. You know, like make it standard. It's like, okay, yeah, I can we're, I can make a beat. Well, here, here were the limitations. Plus, we should explain because people some not everyone knows about oh, the Western oh, or yeah, musical. Oh, you're right, you're right. They do this thing called the 48-hour film festival. Yeah. Where you get 48 hours, you get literally two days to write film and edit of a short film mm -hmm. and they they have like certain things you need to include in it to make sure you're being honest like you need to have this line of dialogue and a character called this and this prop you need to so use. that they know that you're not going to make yeah. it ahead of time taking a month but it's like this is this it's this competition they do and everybody gets together before you start before the 48 hour starts mm -hmm. and you pick a genre out of a hat and uh i picked the genre and I, I got a little slip that said uh, Western or musical. Yes. O R. Yes. So as a joke, we did the Western or musical. O R E. The musical about rocks. The musical about fucking rocks. It's great. Yeah. It is great. So we had tw we had two days <laughs> right. to to write and edit a fucking musical that is set scary. in the West. And so uh, the day before you guys were going to film. I want to say Mike called me up. Hey, can you help out? You know, we need you know actor, blah blah. I was like, oh yeah, no problem. The day I show up to film, I I, I have a very small role, and then Mike tells me, oh, you know what? What we really need is someone to make the music for this. And I was like, oh my god, maybe, sure, you know, like <laughs> I'm not like a good musician or anything. Uh, and I was like, Sh sure, no problem. But like writing a whole song, that's going to be really hard. And he's like, no, no, no. We already wrote the song. You just need to uh, make the music for it. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> and so they just handed me the footage of all the singing. There was no. <laughs> and they, they sang live and I needed to use their live singing <laughs> to make the music too. There was no metronome. <laughs> There, there was no wild audio captured. It was just the footage I was giving, and it's like, how the 
fuck am I supposed to make a song out of any of this? Can't you just like auto tune it or something? I, oh God, I tried. <laughs> I don't know much about this stuff. Jesus, I tried to auto tune like all of them. Like all of them were terrible, and so like that's why you see the strange edits and the time warping <laughs> in all of those songs is just to make it fit the metronome. And then like literally, all I could do was like make a simple rudimentary <laughs> beat. Like 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 people people who are not great singers doing a cappella renditions of a song they've never heard. It was. But you, you tried to auto-tune me. And that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> auto-tune did not work on Rich Evans. We replaced Rich Evans with a speak and spell. It's an improvement. They were, they were, they were so, like, you know, Mike at least was, like, kind of this, like, monotone character. So his singing kind of worked. And, and, you know, in Mike's head, it was just like, no, these are just standard songs. Just make music. And it's like, that's not how it works. That's not how it works at all, Mike. Also, I'm not a good musician. <laughs> One of the songs was so rich, was so terrible. In. What was that song for the prostitute? I forgot. Oh, uh, rocks. Uh, something. I mean, something or other rocks. I'll get my rocks off with you. No, no. It was like, it's like. It's a life of rocks, not a life for co- of cocks yes, for me that or one. something. Rich was so terrible. You got uh, hopefully the the audio exists somewhere of your original singing. Hey there, oh, with your hat is So you're doing like falsetto. He tried to go falsetto. There was no fixing it, and so I'll, I just sang over it. And I was like, "That's going to be the joke." Is it's clearly a different I, voice. I, I have to hide. I'm hiding. And so you can't it's, see me. I'm hiding. Like the only way this song is going to work is if I record my voice over it, and that'll just be the joke. And no, they're like, Bar- fine. Barack fine. Obama should have done that with his baseball pitches. <laughs> you know, you see him throw out the first pitch. Oh, sure. And he's like as bad as I would be. It was so was bad, but you know, but also it was a, a short created in 48 hours. Yeah. So it's yeah. like. You what, have, do you, what do you expect? The lyri- you know, I think people were mostly focusing on the lyrics, which were hysterical. Yes. Yeah, you hopefully. Know, it's a song about pyrite and... Oh, my God. Other things. Still one of the best endings I s- ever. I know I started this, but I know it's a good story. Yeah. I gotta have to hide, but I know it's a good story. It's a good story. No, one, and that, that one of my favorite endings out of any short was the, was the, the showdown. Yeah. It yeah. was great. Yeah. Great. So it was dual works... And then, oh, we the take heroes. take turns shooting at each general. other's genitals. <laughs> For an hour. For an hour. <laughs> and whoever shoots the other guy in the genitals more times wins. <laughs> it was just, it made me well, laugh. They take it turns. was cute. It was they take charming. turns shooting oh, each other right. in the genitals. Yeah. <laughs> And then you're going to win the day <laughs> with your rock instead yeah. of a yeah. gun. But he just, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's great. It's great. Fine piece of art, the Western or musical. I love it. I really do. It's cute. Gold is, yeah, they, they, they know it. Gold, Gold tastes better, better with salt and seaweed. pepper, which makes no sense. I read that one line again, Ren. I love it. Gold is better, makes pussy wetter. I wrote that. It's a pie right. I'm, not okay. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit I wrote that. <laughs> it don't pie right is not right by me. It don't get the bitches you see. You know I like it because I know the lyrics to it. I mean, granted, I'm decent with remembering lyrics, but still. <laughs> Unit 603 Idiot says, Hey, Rich. Just got an awesome new job that requires me to be entertaining. As the funniest guy I've seen in years, can you give me any advice other than swearing loudly and mispronouncing words? That's basically it. You can't you can't teach funny. You can't. You either are or you're not. You can't you can be even, yourself. Even if you're a funny person, half the time when you're trying, you're not funny. Find your find your own funny because, you know, you, you you're not gonna be you're not rich. If your 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 version of humor, your sense of humor is going to be different than his. If you're imitating somebody else, you're probably going to fail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and here's the, here's the thing: you cannot teach funny. I do think that you can craft funny. Okay. I think any person who goes at it long enough will eventually find the flow. I you hope. 
I guess some people don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's the hope that anyone can find that flow. But you know, maybe take some uh, take some improv classes. Maybe take uh, take a little yeah. improv class. But be a good you, or 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 a bad you, not a not a don't be imitation rich. rich. Yeah, it won't work. That that's good advice. No one can be rich but rich. And sometimes I'm surprised rich is rich. Jack, what, what did they teach you in clown college? Clown or is that, clown? Was it, isn't, that, isn't that teaching someone to be funny? Well, that's teaching someone to be a clown. Uh, oh, no, but clowns aren't funny? Huh? But clowns aren't funny. So they're not teaching you how to be funny. They taste funny from what I hear. They did, clown college. College. Did you really go to clown college? Yeah, I didn't really went to clown college. I was I was a birthday clown for a few years. Uh, Pictures are just napping. <laughs> I'm sure they <laughs> exist somewhere. Uh, no, they like clown college. They teach you like more so. They teach you like crowd control. You know, like especially if you're going for like birthday parties and stuff. It's like how to manage the horde of children that you have to deal with, and then you know stuff like balloon animals and simple party tricks and makeup and. You yeah. know, they they teach you like, or they kind of guide you in crafting your shtick. Was this like a, a bachelor's degree in clown then, <laughs> or a clown doctorate? <laughs> it was oh yeah, ba- but definitely a bachelor's, a minor in clowning. <laughs> but no, you oh, know what? Cool. Uh, improv. Uh, the, every every just about every city will have some sort of improv thing. We have comedy sports, and they offer classes and workshops, and it just kind of teaches you how to bounce off of other people i think that that is more important like it teaches or whatever the word is yeah well and it 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 teaches you how to open up your mind to just spit something out until it's funny you know improv i think is good for everyone to know (laughs) somebody says i just imagined 30 clowns in a classroom making balloon animals we we didn't wear the makeup in class (laughs) that would be so (laughs) cute though (laughs) Like someone, someone walks into door, the door and thirty clowns turn. <laughs> yeah. Wrong class. Wrong class. I can, I made and the person it. who walks into the class. It's the wrong class. They're a mime or something. Right. <laughs> I can I can make balloon animals. I have, I have forgotten how to make most balloon animals. They're so I, hard to blow up. I can. Well, you get a pump. Okay. You get a pump. Uh, I can still make a poodle, and turn it into a giraffe, which is pretty I, great. I have. I, I admire you because I have a lifelong kind of minor phobia about popping balloons. And um, the idea of making things out of balloons, it's like, but they're going to pop in my face. Oh, you'll pop. Yeah, you'll pop a few. Uh, no doubt. You'll pop a few. Uh, the Riddle of Steel. I'm not going to read this just because it's, it's coming close to getting into political ter- territory. I just want to avoid I've I've never played Deus Ex, so I oh, I, saw I know that, yeah. I know nothing about the context. Yeah. So I'm just not gonna comment. That's probably smart. It's yeah. I have nothing to add. Sorry, sorry. The real of steel. I I don't know that much about Deus Ex, so yeah. Anonymous says, "How do you feel about Bill Murray's womanizing character being a person with a position of authority at a co-ed institution?" It's a movie. In real life, it would be pretty shitty. But, like, that's his character. In, in real life, anybody trying to sleep with their students, yeah, you fire them. Oh, absolutely. And it's But it's like, that's kind of his character in the movie. He is a sleazy con man. Yes. That's all he's trying to do with Dana, too, is get into her pants. And, you know, failing, because luckily Dana is a strong female character. Fortunately, it's a work of fiction. That's, you know. <laughs> but, like... That's kind of the thing about the original Ghostbusters is these guys are kind of schmucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Most of them. Most of them are just, they're working Joes, they're failed scientists, they're con artists, they're dreamers. Winston seems normal. Yeah, he's not supposed to be a virtuous character. Uh, v- right. Right. Well, uh, uh, pointing out some of the differences between the new one and the old mm-hmm. one, the new one, you know, all the girls are the best at everything ever. And these guys are just uh, schmucks. Anonymous says, okay, forget about Miami Vice. That was random. But have you heard about the angry petition against Rotten Tomatoes because they measure Suicide Squad to only to have only 31% positive views? Yes, and we talked about it earlier. Yep. Sorry. 
if you missed that, we talked about it earlier. It's it's That's dumb. ridiculous. It's, these fans are dumb. We, we we said in short that it's that the site aggregates more or less the same reviewers for every movie, and it just it, and, and they're not creating the content. It just happened that for this movie, the people that they were polling didn't like that one. Dagesh says, "Have you thought of dissolving VHS tapes in sulfuric acid?" As a scientist man myself, I can walk you through it. There's a trick you can do to make it disappear into thin air j over just a few hours. Or well, you know, we already did the dissolving tape. Do stick. we trust Rich with sulfuric acid? How? What, what did what did uh, acetate acetone? What did what did? Are you, are you worried I'll burn my own dick off? Yes. What did what did Jay use? Acetone, like stuff a nail polish remover. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that stuff's horrifically dangerous to handle. No, and it and it, it like dissolved it dissolved a pr the tape pretty well. It took a while. I think no matter what, the issue that we would run into is cloudy water. You know. So we we have some time lapse and some maybe some water changes or something. I don't even know. Yeah. Oh shit. Um. But yeah, like Rich said, we've already done the whole dissolve the tape thing. Oh shit. Stigma U5 says, Hey guys, have you played This is the Police? I really, really like it. You should play it. Wow. I've not played it. I just saw that on, it's on, I think it's on a Steam sale right I've, now. I've only just heard of it. What's it what is it? I, I just saw the picture of okay. it. Okay. It's on Steam sale right now, I we'll, believe. We'll look into it at some point. Trying to get through these tips so we can talk about Stranger Things. Gobbledygook says, speaking of clown face, Jack, you, will you try We Happy Few? I hear people are complaining that it is difficult, depressing, and bad. We, we Happy Few recently... You'd have to know it was going to be depressing based on the subject matter. Of course. It's, it's all about, like, not taking your happiness pill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, and it's, it's been out in early access, which is why people are playing it, and I... You guys know how, I, like, early access I rarely dip into because it's constantly changing. I want to wait until that one's done. I think when it's done, we'll play it. I don't know if we'll play it on stream or do an episode about it, but okay. that was a big E3 game, so yeah. I, I would like to play it. But <clears throat> wait till it's out of early access because anything can change. They could rewrite stuff. They could fix stuff. Like, oh, I ran into this horrible game-breaking bug, and that colors my opinion of this. Oh, it's just be, early to access. Be, to be fair, we've talked about early access stuff before. We have. And and uh, I always cringe a little bit. I, I hate mm. it a little bit. I like playing a fully done game. If it's something small that's not getting attention, though, and I think it's got potential, I don't mind calling it out. Sure. Like 20XX, I think. And yeah. I, I think 20XX fit because of the not Mega Man theme. But this is a big game. I'm going to okay. wait till it's done. Okay. going to wait till it's done. There's no good reason for a AAA game to be early access. Because they use no, it as there's a... There's no reason. They use it as a marketing tool now. I know. It's not the point. It's not why, it's not why it exists. It exists so smaller devs can, can get this grand, ambitious idea they have funded. Yep. Why it exists. Does it, maybe they just want to use the whole world for beta testing. Yeah, that's probably yeah, another. You know reason. what? You're, you're a fucking triple A studio. You got the money to not have to do that shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be doing your free beta testing if you can afford it. But if they can make people do it for free, yeah, well, they will. Because, they're going yeah. to. If they can make people do it for free and drum up early hype for sales, of course they're going to do it. Could could backfire. It almost bit Doom in the ass because everyone hated the uh, multiplayer early access. Well, you guys, beta. You, oh yeah, yeah. You guys can vote with your not playing it. <laughs> for that particular, I actually I hear the the whole snap map uh, thing has gotten a lot better in uh, in Doom. Yeah, they added hell. Oh, that's apparently. nice. So, <laughs> so we uh, the some we we got a couple of requests to take another look at to it. take another look at the snap map. Jack and Rich go to hell! Yay! We Happy Few is an indie game, but it's being pushed hard by Microsoft. That was a, a big show at E3, and it's been all over the Xbox dashboard. But it's not really AAA, few. then. I don't know. I don't know much about it, so I'm I'm in the dark. It's indie developers and a big publisher. Okay. So it's like okay. it's in that weird mishmash world where Microsoft is pushing hard for We Happy. So few. they've got deep pockets. The, there's po there's money somewhere in there. I don't remember the details, but I know the people that did um, 
six, 18, no wait, 17 bit games that did uh, Skulls of the Shogun. They were heavily backed by Microsoft. I, I remember hearing about them getting like basically screwed. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's too bad. <clears throat> That's too bad. Anonymous says, "I got here late. Is there a woman on the stream in response to the scientist man video?" <laughs> This is, Ka Karen, this is Karen. You are our token woman tonight. Uh, I guess, yeah. She is. Try to oh, try to say something womanly. Oh my! It's just the best thing ever. So, oh I, my god, Becky! I like pink. <laughs> I like pink and ponies. Is See, math? How is math? Is math too hard? Math is hard. Now our our woman quota is filled. <laughs> See you next month, Karen. <laughs> I thought maybe they were asking that I was a woman this time. You know, I was like, no, I'm, I'm a all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Gobbledygook says... I'm a woman all the time. <laughs> sorry, also... Sorry, just like that. Also, can you comment on the No Man's Sky spoiler controversy? Someone paid $1,300 for a pre-release copy that. and leaked footage of all the secrets and the devs are mad or something. As they should be. Well, if yeah. you don't want the secrets, why are you looking for videos on this game like, right. a week before it comes out? That's to some degree. That's on you. If you're Ag too dumb to avoid spoilers, Agreed. and then you get mad when you get spoiled. Don't don't walk into the spoiler bar. Yeah. But also, like, he paid a ridiculous amount of money to get an early copy. Why did they give it to him? Well, uh, well, uh, he he found some like workaround, but he had to pay a lot of money, and he did something like it was some sort of scam. Yeah. But it, it was like fifteen hundred dollars. To get this early copy of No Man's Sky, and how? Uh, just thinking from this person's standpoint, how are you making money off of this? YouTube videos. He's the first to get the the, the scoops and all the things. I don't know. With ad revenue, his views would have to be I in know. the millions. Maybe he was banking on the fact that that he'd be the first. He'd be the first, or maybe maybe he's just a rich asshole with too much time and money on his hands. <laughs> I, that's a more likely scenario. There's no way you can get that kind of ad revenue money back before the devs shut it down, and they did. They sh they shut it down immediately. Notch so would Notch would pay thirteen hundred dollars to play No Man's Sky. <laughs> so he did something jerky. Yeah. And he paid for it financially. Yes. Punishment served. <laughs> yep. I like it. 